Lakers' LeBron James and Anthony Davis are questionable for tomorrow night at New York. They each missed last night's win at Boston. In college basketball, halftime St. Bonaventure with the lead at number 21, ranked 8 and 30-28. to 28. And first of a triple header on FS1, halftime Ohio State leads at Iowa 38-36. After this, 13th-ranked Creighton will host Butler. Joaquin Neiman shot a first-round 59 at the Live Golf Opener in Mexico. Scotty Scheffler is in a three-way tie for the lead at Pebble Beach. WBC heavyweight champ Tyson Fury postponed his January 17th fight. The L.A. Kings fired coach Todd McClellan. I'm Steve DeSager. You know who this is? Fox Sports Radio's Odd Couple. One guy's married. One guy is divorced. One guy has no kids. One guy has two beautiful daughters. One guy went to college in a cornfield in Ohio. One guy went to an Ivy League school in the big city. One guy spends his Sunday morning seated in the pew. Sweet Jesus! The other spends it throwing money at the pole. Can these two sports writers share a radio show without driving each other crazy? From the TireRack.com Fox Sports Radio Studios, here's the odd couple. Chris Broussard and Rob Parker. It is the Odd Couple. I'm Chris. He's Rob. And we are all the way live from the TireRack.com studios. And listen up, folks. Shortly after our show, our podcast will go up. So if you've missed any of today's show or you will miss some of it, just check out the pod. All you do is search Odd Couple wherever you get your podcast, And be sure also to follow, rate, and review the podcast again. Just search Odd Couple wherever you get your podcast, and you can see today's show posted right after we get off the air. Of course, spread the word. Tell the people in your neighborhood, your family, your friends, your coworkers, loved ones, enemies, the whole nine yards. We got Eddie House, NBA champion, joining us at the bottom of this hour. Obviously, we'll be talking NBA with Eddie, and that is where we're going to start now. If you didn't see it, it was a great moment last night at Madison Square Garden. And and let's just keep it real. A lot of the best moments in recent memory that have been at the Garden, Rob, have been other players. It's been Trey Young going off on the Knicks. It's been Reggie Miller coming back against the Knicks. Michael Jordan, some of his I, special I covered nights. that LeBron game, Chris, James, the Reggie Kobe. Miller game. Yeah, right. Eight, eight, eight points in 18 seconds, was it? Yep. Um, I, I saw a him lot push of down memories. Greg Anthony. <laughs> yeah, he did. He definitely did uh, for other teams. Not that there haven't been any for the Knicks, but last night was a great one. And Jalen Brunson, who, my goodness, having a tremendous year, will be an all-star for the first time. Can you he say led, Mark Cuban might have blown it? Well, we'll get into that. Uh, but he led... Indian are the Knicks to a 109-105 victory over the Indiana Pacers. Rick or Jalen Brunson, his father Rick is on the staff with the Knicks, and I covered Rick when he was a player for the Knicks. And then wasn't didn't play much, you know, but he was on the team. Um, and Jalen Brunson goes for 40. And Rob, that was the Knicks' ninth straight win. And they are balling. Now, they, they've been great since OG Anunobi joined them. Gazuntai. I'm shocked you didn't say I was going to say. I was wondering. <laughs> Very nice. But, Rob, they are the third seed in the Eastern Conference. And, obviously, we have to wait and see what the future holds for Joel Embiid this season. But Philadelphia, they, they've lost four straight. Now they've won one. But they had lost four straight. With MB struggling with the injuries, they're now the fifth seed. And so the Knicks, only a half game behind second seed at Milwaukee, five games behind Boston. Like the question that people in New York are wondering, or you know, New Yorkers, they're they're saying they are of this. But I want to ask you, Rob, do you think these Knicks are contenders to win the East? I say no. That's my gut, Chris, because I still think the teams ahead of them are better and have better players. And as you know, in the playoffs, in the NBA, it's not winning one game. And I know they've won nine in a row, and and I'm not knocking them and beating up some competition, whatever. Whoever they beat, they beat them. It's four out of seven, Chris. That's what separates you in the NBA. Can you beat them four times? 
And I think the Knicks are just below that. I think I, I, that I think that they're five through eight, not one through four. I can't disagree. Um, That's it. Know, I'm not. The, the, we're uh, not. We're not bashing them. No, no. Everyone. I mean, come on. As good as Jalen Brunson is, you don't think of him as the best player on a championship team. All right, Milwaukee's got Giannis and Damian Lillard. And even if you think Brunson is better than Dame at this point, Dame is older. He's in his, I think, his 13th year. He's still a really good player, great player. But even if you take Brunson over him, I mean, you got Giannis to deal with. And Boston, Tatum, better than anybody on the Knicks. Jalen Brown, probably better than anybody on the Knicks. But Jalen Brown's their second guy. And then you got Porzingis and Drew Holiday, who's a champion. Derek White, like, those teams are better. Now, Philly, obviously Embiid is the best player between the Knicks and the uh, Sixers. Let's assume Embiid's healthy. Tyrese Maxey, you can all debate who's better between him and Brunson. But Philly is mentally, they have not proven they're mentally tough enough to win anything. And, and I think the Knicks are tough. And then you got Miami, which we know is mentally tough. I don't care what they're doing right now. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the Eastern Conference Because we've playoff. seen it, Chris. They've been yeah, to the finals no, no twice, uh, twice in the last four years. You- I tell you what, Milwaukee don't want to see them in the playoffs. Milwaukee's hoping somebody else beats Miami. I guarantee you that. Here's what I'll say, Rob, about the Knicks as well. They remind me of your typical Tom Thibodeau team. And this is a compliment. Thibodeau, I know he's had some rough years here and there, had a few rough years in Minnesota. Everything hasn't gone swimmingly. It looked like he was going to get fired with the Knicks, Chris, uh, with that bad year. Right. But this dude is a good coach. And what his strength is, is he maximizes under-talented teams. He will get you to play hard. He will get you to defend. And he will get you to play, if he has the right type of players, he will get them to play to the absolute peak of their ability in the regular season. And I I won't even say he doesn't do it in the playoffs. The fact is he he has under-talented teams. But they look like an elite team in the regular season because he gets them to play harder than everybody else. And, Rob, we saw it in Chicago. Remember with Derrick Rose and then a bunch of good but not great players. You had Derrick Rose. Then you had Luau Dang. You had Joe Kim Noah. Really nice players, but pieces. And every, Rose carried them offensively, and those dudes worked their tails off. And that's what this Knicks team is. When they when that Rose team got to the playoffs, they had beaten the Heat in the regular season, if I remember correctly, and then LeBron and Wade beat them 4-1 in the playoffs. This is what the Knicks are. And I'm not saying they – and that team got to the conference finals, those Bulls. So the Knicks can have a nice playoff run, but at the end of the day, a more talented team – is going to take them out, whether it's Milwaukee, whether it's uh, Boston, and, or you know Miami will be a dog fight because Miami's Chris, not the most talented team in the you know league either. So if it was one game, could they beat you for one absolutely. game? Absolutely, absolutely. Anything they to, can happen in one game. If it was one game, could they get to the finals? Absolutely, a March Madness style thing, sure. But yeah, I mean that Rob I, and look. This and I said this, Rob. You remember? You might remember this about um, two months ago, maybe a month to two months ago. Remember, I said for the Knicks to win a championship, at least as they're currently constructed, and this was before they got Anunoby. It was like they're gonna have to win it like Detroit won it in '04, or like Seattle won it in '79, where you're not the most talented. You don't have one transcendent superstar which most championship teams do you just got like three or four really good players 
borderline stars, and, makes and, some all-star and, teams here. And, and on you, any given well night, coached. any given night, one of those guys can right. beat you. Right. And, can be and the so best you're not relying on, on one guy to beat you, yep. right? And number two, you said well coached. Correct. Larry Brown with that 2004 yep. team, Chris, and they played defense. They got stops. Right. They got the loose balls. They got the extra stuff. Like, that is how yep. they were able to beat Kobe and Shaq and all the teams that they beat. They weren't yep. the best team. They weren't. Right. Like, I'm right. talking about talent. No, runners. you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. And they, and they what they also do, Rob, they played a slow pace. You mentioned it. They held teams below 70. Well, that was the real bad boys. No, but, no, no. Uh, that was the 2004. That was the, okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So that the was bad the, boys yep. remake, remix, yep. whatever. No, that was during the Brown era, Chris. 13, 13 straight games under 70. Rob, these Knicks, 27th in the league in pace. Only 30 teams. Defensively, they're 7th. Offensively, they're 7th. In, in terms of rating. So, similar. And that's that's what they're doing. But generally, this is going to sputter out at some point in the playoffs. Second, third round of the playoffs. Let me say this, right? Because you brought up, did Mark Cuban make a mistake with Rick, with Jalen Brunson? Absolutely, of course. Because remember, what did Brunson want, Rob G? Was it, was it $50 million? At one point, they wouldn't give him a $50 million like four years, fifty million, or something like that. Three years, fifty million. They could have got him for that. He obviously ended up getting about a hundred with the Knicks. Chris, four years, fifty-five and a half million, and they think said about no. That. They, they said, said no. no way, no how. And look but, at look at what's going on now. Look at now. But here's what I'm going to say, Rob. And you know, I am a Luka Doncic fan. I think the boy is bad. I've called him Luka Legend since he got in the league. But, Rob, I've been beating this drum, and I hope people listen, I, particularly people in Dallas or in Lucas camp. We didn't know Rick Jalen Brunson had this. We didn't know Jalen Brunson could cook like this. Why didn't we know? Because Luka always had the rock. Jalen Brunson is a ne- dude that needs the ball in his hands so he can do his thing, too. And the only time you got to see Jalen Brunson cook was when Luka was on the bench. Or if they happened to be out there together and Jalen had it going, Luka would be just kind of standing and watching. That's going to be a problem in Dallas, and it already is. When Kyrie's cooking, Luka's watching, whether he's sitting on the bench or standing on the wing. They've got Luka. I don't know if it's him or if it's the, the, the scheme. But he doesn't know how to play without the basketball in his hands, or at least he doesn't do it. That's They've not, that's not get conducive him to with, winning no. big time, though, no, Chris. That's, no. That's, People are saying he's like James Harden. And what, what has that gotten James Harden? Right. You're a great individual, but you no. Know. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, from Learfield, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling. Presented by Pioneer. Pioneer combines cutting-edge research with one of the largest local testing programs in the industry to help farmers succeed. Pioneer, what's next happens here. Also brought to you by Hy-V. Score big savings with a new Hy-V Perks membership. Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, just minutes south of Iowa City. By University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. Iowa Lottery, be a VIP with the Iowa Lottery. Visit ialottery.com for details. And by Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Now, welcome to Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Good Friday evening, and welcome into the Chrysler Center on the campus of the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And we get ready for a top 15 matchup between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Michigan Wolverines. Stephen Grace and Mark Ironside saying thanks for joining us as the Hawks back in it uh, on the road yet again. It's kind of funny we got onto the bus uh, leaving Iowa City heading up to the airport and 
I was humming in my head a little Willie Nelson, and here comes Drake Ayala climbing on the bus on the road again. Just can't wait. And I'm like, hey, great minds think alike. It's, uh, it's been all weekend last week on the road, and doing it again here this weekend, luckily just tonight, uh, before we head back home and take on Penn State next Friday. But uh, big one here tonight as the Hawkeyes and the Wolverines square up. Michigan ranked number 12 in the country, 5-3. and three. They've lost uh, to Ohio State, Penn State, and South Dakota State. And the Hawks would love to add another notch uh, into that loss column here tonight. But, uh, Mark, it's going to be an interesting matchup, and it's going to be a tough one. Uh, there's some good individual matchups, and Hawks are going to have to keep doing what we've seen the last couple of weeks of coming out, controlling things, and putting a lot of points onto the scoreboard. Well, we've had a great cut last couple of weeks, and last past three dual meets, actually four count Nebraska. So um, we just got to keep rolling. we got to keep moving the right direction. I like the, the – I don't know what the best – word is here like just the the vibe i guess of the guys very relaxed and ready to go uh they need to continue to keep carrying over with all the points they've been putting on the scoreboard and the bonus points and that's something you know we were just over in the uh michigan wrestling room getting the weight down and stuff like that and that's one thing that terry brands was talking about to the guys was bonus points bonus points bonus points keep it going we didn't get some bonus points so this is gonna be an extremely tough duel meet here tonight Stephen. there's no doubt about it and uh, they got some veterans on their team, and um, it's it's. It, and then we, you and I were talking before too. There's only two matches or two weights that these guys have even wrestled head to head together, and that was at 25 De Agostino and Drake in Carver like two years ago. Yep. And Drake won that one. Six and, to five, and, I think six it was. Six five is a, is a barn burner, and then um, who was the other weight? Uh, 57. Last year, 57. Yeah, Franick. Frannick and Luan and at the Nationals, which we weren't following that match, obviously, really yeah. probably then because Frannick was North Dakota then. So. And it was Luan, so the final <laughs> score was, guess, 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 guess. 3-1. 3-2. It didn't three, go sudden two. victory. Okay. And that's probably how it's going to end up tonight, something really close between those two. But there's a lot of unknowns here tonight. Um, but I love the electricity here in the building, the Chrysler Arena. Uh, there's already been some, some fireworks um, kind of before the dual meet even started, which we can, we can fill all the listeners in here in a little bit on. Uh, but the arena's rocking. they got some music playing. It's Chrysler Arena. This place is a beautiful facility. It's where the Big Tens were at last year. A uh, lot of people looking forward to this dual meet here. Unfortunately, the only negative about it is it's at 8.30 at night, right. Michigan time. And so a lot of the high schoolers can't make it because they got to wrestle tomorrow. And so they're going to be they're kind of bummed out. I know that's something that um, was talked about earlier today, that just a late start, but that's Big Ten. Big Ten had Penn State and Ohio State on earlier, and then they always seem like they always put Iowa last. Yeah. And and, and it's kind of unfortunate for us. So Trying to get a quick update. Last I saw, Truax just got pinned. Really? So it was 19-9. Penn State had the lead in that one. Trying to see if I can get any more. Brooks is up 6-1 to one after the first period in that match. So, um like somebody asked, would Penn State shut out Ohio State? And it's definitely possible, but there's also been some matchups that, I mean, I think 41, they went to sudden victory. Um, Mendez lost to Bartlett, 25. There was a questionable call at the very end. It looked like Ohio State may have had a takedown that would have defeated Davis and uh, given them the win there at 125. But uh, I saw it. it was, I get that takedown every day, all day long. I, I, yeah. He was perpendicular, chest to chest. It's not like there was momentum that carried him through. Uh, to me, that was that was a pretty clear takedown. Yeah, I would would agree. No near falls should have been awarded, no but I could falls, see the takedown. No. no, you could almost got you could have gotten a one count for a near fall, definitely not two. Yeah, but as it stands, Penn State leading that one right now, nineteen to nine, with uh, two weight classes yet to go. So they are going to pick up another victory, most likely. Let's take a look at our Hawkeye Women's Wrestling Update brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort featuring the Draft Day Sports Lounge where you'll find great food, beverages, and the Top Golf Swing Suite ready to play. Hawkeyes on Wednesday went up to uh, Sioux Falls and won up there against the University of Sioux Falls 39-7. That is their final duel of the season. They close out their inaugural year undefeated in dual meets. They will head to the Grandview Open in Des Moines on Saturday while they get ready for their uh, regionals, which are towards the end of February. Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, located just minutes south of Iowa City, is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the inaugural season of Hawkeye Women's Wrestling. Thank you, Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, for your partnership with the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
Also, if you or someone you know needs support now, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. Had a chance to uh, finally track down Coach Brand. Some of those fireworks Mark was talking about uh, leads to a very short interview with Coach Brands this evening. Definitely had his mind elsewhere besides uh, having me throw an interview into his face. And so uh, we will take a quick time out. We will come back and hear from Coach and be back with more of the pre-meet right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. Hawk fans, stop in and visit the newly renovated guest rooms at Hyatt Regency Coralville Hotel and Conference Center located in the heart of Iowa River Landing. Stay within walking distance of Extreme Arena, home of the Iowa Hawkeye volleyball team, as well as great restaurants, shopping, and scenic walking trails along the Iowa River. Hyatt Regency Coralville is also the home of Hawk Talk with Lisa Bluter and Fran McCaffrey this fall. Come together at Hyatt Regency Coralville, where everything you need is right here. This is Monica from Monica's in Coralville. Randy trusted Seth Sal and me for decades. Over the years, we've learned from his work ethic, generosity, and courage. We made a strong team because he was a great coach. We are honored to carry on his legacy and will not change the Monica's playbook, Italian specialties, and American favorites made from authentic ingredients, prepared and served by a caring staff. Like athletes, we will never forget our great coach. Thank you for your continued support. And of course... Go hard. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin, and over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. to take on week one here tonight. Uh, it's going to be some interesting matchups. A lot of uh, new guys that uh, guys haven't had matchups before still take those opportunities as soon as they get out there and uh, do what they need to do. We have that, and we have matchups that we've had before. Ayala and the Augustine right out of the gate. So we got to be ready. Um, we are starting at 125, and this is a big one. we got to be ready to go. We're on the road, and it's time to go. How's that? Looking forward to it. Thanks very much, Coach. That is Hawkeye Coach Tom Brands presented by Pioneer. Pioneer boosts your yields by combining industry-leading R&D with rigorous local testing. At Pioneer, what's next happens here. Back with more of the pre-meet right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. Hey, Hawkeye fans. This is Monica from Monica's. Randy always told Chef Sal and me that family comes first. So I'm here with my son to invite you to stop by before or after your favorite university event. We are proud of our Hawkeye co-workers including Sal's daughter, Masera, and hope you know that if you are headed to Carver or Hancher, our awesome food, full bar, and Monica's family await. We hope to see you soon, and what do you say, Meyer? Go Hawks! Football is back. Stock up on your tailgate essentials with Local Craft Cellar. Local Craft Cellar in Cedar Rapids offers a large selection of craft beer, wines, and spirits, plus their giant selection of non-alcoholic beverages. Untiled art, athletic brewing, and cannabis-infused social beverages from Climbing Kites. Sea Avenue Northeast in Cedar Rapids, just north of Boyson Road. Local Craft Cellar, largest selection of craft beer in the area, and so much more. Coralville Transit is now hiring part-time bus drivers. These positions offer flexible schedules of approximately 25 hours per week. Availability to work on Saturdays is a plus. Pay starts at $21.44 per hour, plus benefits. A health insurance option is available. Candidates must have or be able to obtain a current, valid commercial driver's license. Learn more and apply at coralville.org or call 319-248-1700. The City of Coralville is an equal opportunity employer. This is Jordan Suckafetz here for my dad, Brian, and his true blue crew at Dodge Street Tire. 
If you're wrestling with your car or truck, let their crew take care of you and your family with honest and quality award-winning service. For over 30 good years, Dodge Street Tire have been champions for Hawkeye fans everywhere, pinning down prices and problems for their neighbors. Don't let your vehicle's tires and troubles keep you from achieving your goals. Dodge Street Tire, at the corner of Dodge and Chit Church Street. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Just finishing up uh, Senior Day festivities here for the Wolverines. And it's kind of interesting. Six guys recognized in the first four are in their first season wrestling for the Wolverines. <laughs> Transfer portal uh, making a difference here, Mark. Yeah. How many How many down there? Six? It's four out of the six. No, five, I think. No, I think Luan and Strigow have been here. But then the other four. <clears throat> That's a lot. That's an awful lot. Here comes the Iowa guys out of the locker room. Got the senior night done. Oh, here's all this here pictures. De Augustino from Northwestern. Davison from Northwestern. Gomez from Wisconsin. Shane Griffith from Stanford. He was at Stanford last year, right? Still? Yes. I think he would redshirted last year. So, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Well, four of those guys will be uh, – actually, five of those guys will be wrestling, those four transfers, and uh, Michigan hoping to uh, make some noise with those guys. But the Hawkeyes going to have to take care of business. Starting things off at 125 pounds, number five, Drake Ayala, sophomore at 17-2. and two. Taking on number 12, Michael Day Augustino, a senior at 8-2. At 133 pounds, 18th ranked Colin Schriever for the Hawkeyes, a junior at 8-1, takes on number 4, Dylan Ragason. He is a junior with a 19-0 record on the year. At 141, top ranked Real Woods back in the lineup for the Hawkeyes. The senior at 12-0 takes on number 19, Sergio Limley. He is a freshman with a record of 12-4. At 149, Victor Voinovich, sophomore at 11-4, taking on number 6, Austin Gomez, a senior at 4-0. At 157, second-ranked Jared Franick, the senior for the Hawkeyes at 18-1, and one, taking on number 12, Will Luan, a senior at 7-4, and four, or Zach Matten, a uh, junior, I believe. I didn't get his record. He wasn't originally listed in the notes. At 165, sixth-ranked Michael Caliendo, a sophomore at 18-1, and one, taking on Bo Mansatona. He is a freshman with a 15-5 and five record, or possibly number 10, Cameron Amin, a senior with an 8-4 and four record. At 174, eighth-ranked Patrick Kennedy for Iowa, junior at 10 and 2, takes on number three Shane Griffith. He is a senior with a record of 10 and 2. They also weighed in Joseph Walker, a junior with a record of 6 and 4 on the year. At 184, Aiden Riggins for the Hawkeyes, the freshman at 10 and 10, taking on number 19 Jaden Bullock. He is a junior with a record of 13 and 7. At 197, number 11 Zach Glazier for the Hawks, senior at 18 and 0, takes on either Bobby Strigow, one of those seniors with a five and six record, or Ryland Rogers, a freshman with a record of four and four. And we'll close it out with the heavyweights, number 28 Bradley Hill for the Hawkeyes, a freshman at 15 and four, taking on number six Lucas Davison. He is a senior with a record of 10 and three on the year. Matt Sorachinsky and Jim Rigello are the referees for this evening. They have been busy already, Mark. <laughs> yes, they have. There was issues with weigh-ins, and that was part of the reason that our interview with Coach Brands was so short. There was a lot of conversation, we'll say, going on uh, even probably about 35 minutes before this dual meet was ready to get going about uh, what the rules are and if the rules were broken or not. And No, they were broken. 100% they're broken. Well, we can recap that here in just a minute after the national anthem. I think they're doing starting lineups first, um, but but so here's the deal. If you if you really want to know. So my not Miles, my uh, Cameron Amin who wrestles 165, he's one of the 165 pounders for uh, Michigan. 
uh, was not there for skin checks, which I believe is like five minutes or two minutes or something, five minutes before weigh-ins. He was not there for skin checks, and he had to be present for skin checks. And then he wasn't there at the scale when they went through the 100, the weight classes, and then they got to 165. He wasn't there then either. So and then supposedly he weighed in after they came and weighed in after like the 197 pounders weighed in. So by rule, according to the rules, which I don't know, like section two, article nine, right. or whatever, you know, you have to be present for skin checks, and obviously then be present for when your weight when your weight weighs in. If you're not, then you're you you can't compete. If that's a national tournament, hundred ten percent, you're not wrestling. Yeah. I don't know how they came to the conclusion that Cameron and me could still wrestle, but I know that there was a lot of discussion between our trainer, Tom Brands, and the coaching staff for Michigan and the two referees tonight for a very, very lengthy, lengthy time. And the referees were talking for quite a while in the back about it. Um, I think they know the difference between right and wrong, and they kind of they're not going by the rules. They chose the wrong side tonight. So... Uh, that kind of sets a new precedence when it comes to weighing in, I guess, is they, they just basically rewrote the rule book. And so I don't know. We'll see. But that's that's the, the truth of the matter and kind of where they're at. And so I mean, the, the weigh-in sheet we got a picture of sent to us has a means name crossed out because he wasn't there at weigh-in time. Yep. But he was just announced as one of the possible wrestlers at 165 pounds. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women in the United States. You need expert care from specialists who know your heart condition inside and out. UI Heart and Vascular Center has advanced trained cardiologists that use state-of-the-art diagnostic tools. Make an appointment today at uihc.org slash hvc. We need a. I should have brought some vinyl, Steven. I almost texted you and said we're going to be where we were, but then I'm like, ah, we'll be okay. You texted me about my glasses. I did. You should have told me about my glasses and binos. I mean, glasses for a close up. Now I need the binos because we're so far away. I mean, my sight's good from a long ways away, but just we're kind of like up here a little ways. And I know we had the binos for Big Tens last year. I don't know why they can't just put us down low at the head table or something. Or a different table. Just yeah, set us I don't up. know. There's a table behind the head table. There's a couple yeah. spots. Be perfect. Could move somebody else up here. Did you see that stormtrooper down there? I yeah, right. Be, yeah, now I do. I was looking because I think part of that they've got a DJ in attendance. So, well, that stormtrooper is the le- that's a legit Michigan stormtrooper yeah. right there. I mean, legit. That is a stormtrooper. You, like it's got Outfit, the stripes, uniform. like the I mean, football helmet on top. Yeah, that is, that is like high class. That's straight right from the movie. Yeah. Well, let's step out, take our final break of the pre-meet. We'll be back with wrestling action. You're listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Hit a deer? Call Premier! Premier Automotive in North Liberty is Eastern Iowa's most trusted name in auto body repair. Our Premier reputation is built on providing superior customer service, accurate estimates, and high quality work. Our experienced staff guarantees your vehicle is restored and back on the road in no time. Premier Automotive in North Liberty or online at PremierAutoIowa.com. Drive safely, but if you hit a deer, call Premier. Wow, what a huge hit. Well, not as huge as the craft beer selection at local craft cellar. Looking for the largest selection of craft beer in the area? You'll find it all at Local Craft Cellar. On top of their massive selection of craft beer, wine, and spirits, Local Craft Cellar also stocks brats, jerky, bacon, and more from Edgewood Locker Meats, Sea Avenue, Northeast, and Cedar Rapids, just north of Boyson Road, and online at localcraftcellar.com. That's localcraftcellar.com. This is Monica from Monica's in Coralville. Randy trusted Seth Al and me for decades. Over the years, we've learned from his work ethic, generosity, and courage. We made a strong team because he was a great coach. We are honored to carry on his legacy and will not change the Monica's playbook, Italian specialties, and American favorites made from authentic ingredients, 
prepared and served by a caring staff. Like athletes, we will never forget our great coach. Thank you for your continued support. And of course, go Hawks. Hawkeye Sports and Fox Sports. AM 800, KXIC Iowa City. Available everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Now number one for podcasting. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Headgear on, anklet band on, pacing around in that far side from us, ready to get things rolling. He'll be taking on Michael Day Augustino. Penn State just wrapped up a 28-9 victory over Ohio State, so TV coverage sending it down here for Jim Gibbons and Shane Sparks. They're live, coming to you live right now. They're doing their stand-up right now, working their way into this meet and welcoming people into from, from TV land. And now we're going to get probably a commercial, and then we're going to get ready to go. So what time is it? It's it is uh, 8.36. 8.36. So they said start time is 8.37. So. All right. Pretty much right on schedule then. Drake throws his long sleeve shirt on just to stay a little bit warm. Score from Carver Hawkeye Arena, 59-56. The Hawkeye men right now leading Ohio State. Well, you mentioned something earlier, Mark, about you know just the vibe around the team and Standing there after weigh-ins, and Bob Chisano's on the trip with us, and he's like, you know, I'm just amazed, standing in the locker room. These guys are weighing in. They've got a big match coming up, and they're just sitting here, just relaxed, joking with each other, watching the previous dual meet, eating their food, just getting everything ready to go. And, you know, that's that's what you have to do as an athlete is get into it when it's your time. That's what you and Tom always say. That's what Gable used to say. <clears throat> that's where that comes from is, is you don't get into it until it's your time to get into it. And, you know, I mean, with the two-hour away, and we come into this building at 6 o'clock, 6.15, and uh, some of these guys won't be wrestling until about 10.15 tonight. Yeah. That's a long time. That's four hours from, from basically away and almost before you wrestle. That's a long time on a late night. De Agostino, De Agostino and Drake Isla underway. Agostino coming across with a front headlock. Drake clears of that into a two-on-one, trying to get the head on the opposite side. It's nice. military appreciation night, so Michigan wearing some camo uh, singlets. singlets here tonight. Camo as in uh, camo, but they're still blue and kind of gray and, and uh, different some shades of bluish. So still Michigan colors with a gold Michigan M on the back of them. Drake trapped down, tried to hit in a left-handed high crotch, didn't get. D'Agostino comes up, over-under situation here. Drake doing a good job kind of clearing out of that. D'Agostino trying to shoot him off the mat and get one of them stall calls on the edge for not circling back in. But right now, Drake's doing a pretty good job controlling the wrist, circling his butt back to the center. <clears throat> Clears out of that. Now both guys walk sideways to that gold M in the middle of the mat. A lot of Iowa Hawkeye fans still here tonight, too. 145 to go, first period, no score. First match of the night. D'Agostino comes across onto the head. Like we said, these two wrestled a couple years ago at Carver with Drake winning 6-5. to D'Agostino liking that rule of allowing facial hair. He's got big Full bushy beard. beard. Big old bushy beard. Big old scraggly haircut. Kind of looks like Mike Zadick out there. Yeah. <clears throat> Drake's got to pick his pace up though he starts too slow in some of his matches and this would be a, a a match here that he's got to come out and start getting on the attack earlier in his matches we've seen the same thing with Ramos and it kind of bit him towards the end of that match he had a great attempt almost scored a takedown and the key word is almost and need to fire off some more attempts take advantage of this first period a little bit more we just cleared the one minute left mark here in the first period be nice if Drake could get to the legs at least once, nice and deep, and even though finish the shot, at least get there and feel De Agostino a little bit. It's, I mean, it's a been two. a couple years since they've wrestled. Yep, got a two on one, couldn't get anywhere with it. How come you got a monitor and I didn't? Uh, they just have one up here for us. De Agostino tries throwing the underhook by. Drake stays square with him. Twenty-three seconds left here in the first. Don't look like much action is going to mm -hmm. actually happen here in this 
first period. changed levels again, but it's gonna be zero zero end of the first period. Not what we want to see. We need to see a little bit quicker start out of Drake. It will be scoreless first. Join the Iowa Lottery VIP Club. Enter to win tickets to see sold-out Iowa men's wrestling with the countdown to Carver promotion. Play Hawkeye Gold Scratch tickets today. Iala's choice. He'll start down to begin the second period. And this is what D'Agostino wants. He wants a close match, and he's a really, really good scramble wrestler. Yeah. He wants it to come down towards the end in one big scramble and come out on top. We can't allow that to happen. We need to make take advantage of that first period a little bit more. Drake trying to come up to his feet, trying to get hand control, switching right there. D'Agostino bumps him forward, flattens him back out. Drake does a great job, comes back up to his base. D'Agostino throwing a leg in. Drake yeah. trying to reach back, peel that out. D'Agostino almost falls. getting near Watch falls. the near falls. Sorchinski looking, not there. Nice now Drake skews the hips out, gets away for the escape. Great job by Drake. Getting hand control and really throwing his hips forward, coming down with his shoulders and turning in. That was a really good job by Drake Ayala in that sit-out situation. Escape gives him a one nothing lead. D'Agostino, 21 seconds built towards his riding time. Nice Drake shot right taps, there by Drake. Gets to the leg, but... Couldn't get the second hand there, so he pulls back out. He's caught in a front headlock underneath. And stale made it. Get back. Fresh start on their feet. <laughs> Augustino making sure that Drake's toe was on the line, not his heel on the line. And tries to slide by. D'Agostino tries popping. Drake into that overhook. Both guys down on their knees now. Drake controlling that opposite wrist. And clears the arm out of the underhook. 45 seconds remains here in the second period. Drake Ayala. got in a shot earlier, kind of deep, but D'Agostino bumped him off right away and he had to clear out. 35 seconds left to go here in the second period. Drake's up. One to nothing with an escape. Gonna get stoppage. Blood time it looks like for Ayala. Bloody nose possibly. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through Life Care, a not-for-profit life plan community serving the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oak Knoll, conveniently located near the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and downtown Iowa City, a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletic Athletics. Visit oaknoll.com to learn more. 26.1 to go, for, or second period, first match of the night. Drake Ayala for the Hawkeyes, a one to nothing lead. Well, right when D'Agostino went over to his bench, I was watching a close-up on your monitor, and um, the coaching staff, Josh Torello, right over there, he said, good job. I'm like, good job? You're losing 0-1. to one. You haven't even fired a shot off yet. But, yeah. again, that tells you. That's the mentality. What they want. They're, you're doing a good job of strategizing. You're doing everything that we told you here in this match. We're, we got them right where we want them. And that's what, you, that's what they want. You can't allow them to have it. One nothing as we go to the third. Day Agostino will start down. Gets down to his hands and knees, stretches each leg out. Now scoots the knees up onto the line. Gets set. Drake covers. Day Agostino tripod up to his feet. Drake tries to pick him up. Unable to do so. So there's the escape. Ties it up at one. Drake taps the head, reaches to that leg. He's got to pull that head a little bit more, Mark. He's been reaching, but he's just been too far away. He's got to find an angle or close that gap just a little bit more. Well, he's picking up his level of intensity here now. Dayog Skino got away, one-to-one. -one. He's really working that two-on-one hard right now, trying to get to the legs of Dayog Skino. Dayog Skino tries jumping over the top of him. We have his leg here. We're in a scramble situation, just exactly like what we talked about was going to happen. He tried to diving to stalemate now. over us. Come up with it, Drake. Come Drake up with it. Trying to elevate, turn back into him, but <clears throat> D'Agostino laying on our back, hovering our legs, stalemate it. One eleven to go in regulation. Yeah, and just like you said, Drake took that shot, and D'Agostino just tried jumping over him. He just He's a really funky scramble wrestler, and that's where his bread and butter is, and... I'm nervous right now for Drake. 
Drake tried passing by on a short drag there. Nothing doing. Changes levels again. DeAgostino comes back, tries throwing the underhook by. 45 seconds left regulation. There's a shot yeah, by DeAgostino, and we stuff him, almost yeah. get him, but we lost the leg momentarily, rolled through. Drake trying to come through, step across here. DeAgostino hanging onto our leg. Drake trying to get around on the side, cracking down. Yeah, DeAgostino hanging on to our leg for dear life and probably going to go to a stalemate with yeah, 22 seconds Dino left. kind of like threw himself to his back there. And we capitalized on it, but DeAgostino scrambled and rolled out of it. And that's just the type of wrestler he is. 20 Drake, seconds left in regulation. Drake's going to have to hit something that solidifies a takedown, like a straight double or something like that. Collar tie, they clear out. And it looks like we will be heading for sudden victory as Drake's got an underhook but not going to get anywhere with it. Tied up at one. D'Agostino, though, a little bit winded. He's getting a little bit tired out there. Drake not. Drake looks really, really fresh. Taking his time adjusting to the... Bottom of his singlet, just in those knee bait. Yeah, when you start seeing stuff like that going on, I, you, you know a guy's his his mindsets. He's tired. It's like me working out, <laughs> <laughs> taking my time. <laughs> Drake looking for an underhook, but pulls right back out of it. Wrestling on a knee, looking to snap. Gets hands up on him. D'Agostino tries throwing the underhook by again. Both guys down on their knees again. Stalemate blown. Fresh start. 125 to go in sudden victory. If you're Drake, you got to sense that too. Like, be smart. As oh. there he takes a shot, almost gets thrown by. Now over-under situation. DeAgostino tried an inside trip, but... Drake, Drake dodged a bullet there. Did a great job squaring and coming up. Tries that slide by again. Again, DeAgostino gets around behind him, but we whizzering hard. Drake trying to switch back in. DeAgostino stepping over top of us. Now we're on the leg. He comes back out front. Great scramble right there by Drake Ayala. Huge scramble. That was great. And then and uh, they're throwing Michigan's the brick gonna challenge in. That. There's no way that was a takedown. No. There's no way that was a takedown. Not anywhere close. I think it close. might just be a breather opportunity for DeAgostino because DeAgostino is dead tired right now. There's no way that was a takedown. Drake Ayala did a fantastic job of scrambling right no. there. I, okay. I wonder where they're, where they're wanting the takedown at. Like when, well, when so, okay, this is where I get frustrated, though. Sorchinski and Ruggarello talk to each other. They walk over to the head table, and they say, you know what, we're going to say that it's a referee's challenge. No, we're going to look not. at it ourselves. No, it wasn't a referee's challenge. They threw the freaking block. No, he gave them their block back and said, we're going to check it ourselves. That's it's terrible. Not a challenge. That is terrible. Yeah. That's horrible. I mean, they're showing it up on the big screen. No, if they question your call and throw the block, then you know what? You that's Hey, that's on them. You made a good call and no call. Drake tried that slide by. DeAgostino threw a leg in on the far side. He'd stepped all the way across, but we still had the whizzer in. I think that's what Tom was arguing down there, that that, that should have been a uh, challenge on... There's no way that was three. Bormat wants three in the worst way. There's no way that was three. And that was just, honestly, he threw that in. And that's what really, really ticks me off right now. Because Bormat threw that in for a breather for D'Agostino. Yeah. And Drake the referees. Hits a couple of shots. This time he finally gets to the leg, trying to dump him down. Far side whizzer right there thrown in by D'Agostino. Drake trying to elevate, trying to be smart here, knowing that he's a Gumby guy, trying to dump him down. Oh, no. D'Agostino reaching back, grabbing our ankle. We're rolling through. He's trying to get neutral danger here. Drake trying to elevate back up. D'Agostino trying to come up over the head. Cradle, no, cradle, the cradle. Lock it up. Lock it up, Drake. D'Agostino reaching back come through on. our legs. Drake trying to clear his leg out here. Come on, let him wrestle here. Let him wrestle seeing if he can out. sack up for a neutral danger. How is that not neutral danger? What am I looking at? I'm not, I can't even tell from that angle here. Now they're going to stop for potentially dangerous with 11 seconds to go in sudden victory. D'Agostino's dead tired, laying on his back, slow it, getting up. Drake up right away immediately. 
I'm telling you, that's one thing I've noticed from watching Michigan this year. They are not in shape. Drake coming back across again, but looks like the sudden victory is going to come to an end. Tied up at one still. So now it'll go to the mat wrestling. De Agostino did get out quicker than Drake did. It will be De Agostino's choice first. He's going down. Come on, Drake, right tough here, right tough. You got to stop that first, second move. Stop that first, second move. Forward, forward, forward. Tom Brands, as Drake looked over, Tom emphatically pointing and says, keep, keep him, down. him down. Get set, we cover it. Chop that left arm, watch for the roll. There's the roll through, comes out front. Still have that deep waist in, so we're still getting riding time. We're into that leg. And there is the escape, 12 seconds. So 2-1 to one is the lead for De Augustino. Drake takes a shot. De Augustino just backing out right here. So De Augustino leads 2-1 to one as we go to the second 30-second tiebreaker. De Augustino is dead tired. What's he wanting? What's he pointing the referee about? I think he's going to say... He wants to let him up to go neutral and keep the riding time. But no, that wouldn't be what you want because Drake's got the riding time. I think that was, again, just another give me what, what three was extra breaths. He's, he's taking his jolly old time here getting on. That was a false start on D'Agostino, too. Yeah. There Drake. you go, Drake. Come on now, Drake. Come out the back door. Get him up. Come up. Throw up the boots. trying to throw the leg in. We get up over the head. Stack him up. Stack him up. Stack him up. Oh, we couldn't quite get there. That should get been a reversal. Fall. We got to get a reversal. Fourteen here. seconds left. Need to get a reversal here, Drake. Drake's trying to come through the back door. De Agostino just leeching on. Drake trying to climb up over there him. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Hand under. Hand under. Hand under. Three, two, one. That's two right there. That's two. Tom Brand's trying to decide if he wants to challenge it. He ain't gonna get it. That's a that's hard. And that De Agostino, he just he's tough to wrestle. Three nothing is the lead for the Wolverines. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women in the United States. You need expert care for spe from specialists who know your heart condition inside and out. UI Heart and Vascular Center has advanced trained cardiologists that use state of the art diagnostic tools. Make an appointment today at uihc.org/hvc. 133 pounds. Colin Schriever for the Hawkeyes taking on Dylan Ragason, a junior with a 19-0 record on the year. Now Tom and Terry trying to figure out where are they able to walk to because the benches are set right along the head table, but there's no chairs out in the corner. And then there's fans on either side. So let's get it. Get one back here, Colin Schriever, taking on undefeated number four ranked Ragason. Yeah, this would be big for the Hawks. We needed that first match from a dual meet perspective, Stephen. That was, I mean, it was definitely a toss up match, kind of like, you know, I mean, we were favored on paper, but that was no, like, gimme match for us. But that's why, again, let's go back to Drake. How bad would you want to have that first and second period all over again? Right. You know? Just need to pull the trigger earlier in those matches, especially against a guy like that. And there's a little slide by right there by Ragus, and it takes um, Shriver down pretty easily. Three nothing is the lead. Shriver still at his base. Ragusen trying to drive forward. Shriver reaching back, looking for that hand control. There, Shriver gets bumped down, flats out. <clears throat> so Ragason's been around a while. And he's tough on top. I don't know that he's much of a turner, but he's...
Put a good ride on here in Schriever. Colin up to his feet. Gets picked up, put back down. Really needed that one, Stephen. Dang it. And Drake come third period in overtime. He, he threw everything in the kitchen sink at uh, De Agostino. It just He just couldn't finish a takedown. And De Agostino's a great scramble wrestler. And the, the other thing is that first period, he we just didn't do it in the second period, really. We didn't do enough to get into scramble situations and, and really make De Agostino burn up a lot of energy either. Right. I mean, he was starting to get tired, and he wasn't even having to do anything. Yep. Just imagine if we would have put him in some situations and, and made him scramble out type of thing, you know? Just got to start a little bit quicker there. Shriver. Find a way to get to the legs. After they go out of bounds, Schriever tries getting to his feet, gets bumped back to his base. Raggison chopping that left arm. 35 seconds left, first period. Schriever back to his feet, looking for that hand control. Standing switch action, throws the hips back, gets out go. for the escape. Good job, Schriever. I'll make it 3-1. They... I don't know what Borman is reaching. Like, he's pointing at something. Fifteen seconds remains now in the first. Schriever changed the levels, reached for that leg on a high crotch attempt, but didn't get anywhere close to it. So it will be a three to one lead for Ragason as we go to the second period. Molly's Cupcakes proudly serving their cookies and treats inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by their downtown Iowa City location for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes, a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Start the second period here. Ragason is going to go down. Shriver on top. 3-1 to one in favor of Ragason. Hawks trail this one 0-3 as Drake Aya lost in overtime. Ragason up to his feet for a one-point escape that makes it 4-1. 144 of riding time for Ragason. Nice if Shriver could get a takedown here and erase some of that so he could make it a little easier decision to try to go out go underneath in the third period. Yeah, takedown right now in this period would go a long ways, a long, long ways. That'd be huge for Colin Schriever. <clears throat> He's got to figure something out, though. He's got to get something set up here. <clears throat> Ragason was one of two victories for the Wolverines when they wrestled Penn State a couple weeks ago, and that was a fall from a neutral position against Nagao. 45 seconds remains here in the second period. Schriever for the Hawkeyes down 4-1. to one. Touched the ankle right there, but Ragason able to clear out. with a fake, comes back across. Not a whole lot of action in the second period here now that Regison got out. So if you're Shriver, do you go underneath, Mark? Well, well you couldn't get out before. I, I mean, it took you a while to get out. I mean, you already got 144 right time against you. What's another 30, 40 seconds, honestly? And you haven't touched the leg yet. So I think your best bet is to get a escape and then a takedown to try and tie it. I mean, I think you have to go down. And that's what he's going to do. <clears throat> get set. Gregson covers. You need to get out and then. Once we get out, we need to find a way to the legs. And do a sit out. Trying to get that hand control back up to our feet. Clear up. Escape. Nice job. That was a great job right there by Colin Shriver getting out. Up to his feet, hand control, turned in right away. Wasted hardly any time on bottom. So it's 4-2 to two now. 140 to go in the match. 153 of riding time for Ragason. So in essence, he's up by three. Now he has to get to his offense. I mean, you're down... 5-2, five, five you're down by a takedown. He, 
I mean, this situation where you got to work hard here to try and get to the offense. Changed levels, couldn't get it. A little slide by action again by Ragason, but Shriver felt that one this time. That's how Ragason got the takedown in the first. Ragason swipes at the leg. More so just getting Shriver to react a little bit. Inside of a minute to go, riding time is now basically locked up. So takedown and ride out for Shriver to force sudden victory. Changed level, swiped at the leg. Changed level again. Ragason with a reshot attempt, but Colin squares up with him. You know, and Ragason's just sitting on the lead, too. Ever since yeah. he got that takedown in the first period, he hasn't done anything since. But we just got to be able to push him to the, that brink. Yeah. He got that takedown on a nice, easy slide by early on in the first period. At 25 seconds to go here in this match here. Colin Shriver's going to have to pull something, pull a trick out of the hat. 15 seconds left. Another shot. Surprised there wasn't the obligatory stall call there. With the riding time point, Ragason is going to win by a score of 5-2. to two. Hawkeyes fall behind 6-0 to zero in the team score. We'll step out for a timeout. We'll be back with more from Ann Arbor right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. Escape to Italy and Sicily in September 2024 with travel leaders, Destinations Unlimited. Enjoy this melting pot of multicultural customs and cuisine and beautiful landscapes. After taking in Rome, we'll head down to the dramatic Sorrento coast and then journey from Italy's heel to its toe of Sicily. To learn more about this or any vacation, contact travel leaders, Destinations Unlimited at duagency.com. That's duagency.com. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fan of corn. This is Jordan Sekafetz here for my dad Brian and his true blue crew at Bad Street Tire. If you're wrestling with your car or truck, let their crew take care of you and your family with honest and quality award-winning service. For over 30 good years, Bad Street Tire have been champions for Hawkeye fans everywhere pinning down prices and problems for their neighbors. Don't let your vehicle's tires and troubles keep you from achieving your goals. Dodge Street Tire at the corner of Dodge and Chichit -Ch Church Street. Hey, Hawkeye fans. This is Monica from Monica's. Randy always told Chef Sal and me that family comes first. So I'm here with my son to invite you to stop by before or after your favorite university event. We are proud of our Hawkeye co-workers, including Sal's daughter, Masera, and hope you know that if you are headed to Carver, or Hancher, our awesome food, full bar, and Monica's family await. We hope to see you soon. And what do you say, Meyer? Go Hawks! On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Taking on Sergio Rimley, a freshman record of 12 and 4 on the season. That's where we need the uh, real woods of old to come through, Mark, and get some bonus points for us. Hawks down 6 0 so far, dropping decisions in the first two matches. Yeah, we just need some bonus points for sure. That would be huge. Slimley is a true freshman out of Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel. There's a nice shot off the whistle right there by Real. Real comes in all heavy all the time. Throwing an underhook by, slides down to that leg. Limley with the overhook, trying to hip into him. Scores back up, snaps into a front headlock.
2.25 to go, first period. True freshman against a six-year senior. Yeah. Big difference. This is like man versus boy here. That's a big difference in matureness, maturity. A lot of hand fighting between these two. First minute. Kind of looking all around, but not a lot of leg attacks so far. Hasn't been really a whole lot of leg attacks in any match so no. far. I mean, Drake Ayala hit the most. Diagostino hadn't hit any. Um, Raguson hadn't didn't hit any. Shriver didn't hit any. Really has been a lot. I mean, Raguson took us down on a slide by. There's a little drag attempt right there by Lemley. 115 to go in the first period. Both guys dropped to a knee at the same time. One minute on the clock. First period, no score at 141 pounds. Hawks trail Michigan 6 to nothing. Ayala losing in tiebreakers. Colin Schriever gives up a first period takedown and loses 5-2. to two. Drag attempt there, and there's a nice shot by Real, but he gets bumped into and flattened out. Lindley trying to lock through the crotch. Real trying to elevate this here. Lindley diving over and grabbing through our legs. Now Real adjusts a little bit. 30 seconds left. Trying to come through the back door. Make, gotta make the right adjustments here. We gotta get takedown here. Turn in. Lemley draped over the back of us here. Trying to swim through it. Now he stands up. Lemley reaches back, grabs an ankle. We there get the head off to the off outside. To Lemley hips into us, almost held us over right there. He's got good hips. This yes, Lemley he does. does. He's got really good hips. And the first period comes to an end scoreless. Lemley will start down to begin the second period. So we're reels good, but there was no hesitation from Limley. He said, I'm going down. False start on reel. Chopped that arm before the whistle sounded. Limley right away up to his feet, tries a standing switch. Real pulls him back down, trying to trap that arm. He's got it trapped, and he's got the wrist, too. So that's where he likes to be. Limley coming up, doing a good job building his base. Got that arm cleared out. Now just a quick hip tilt action by Real Woods up into a sit out. Real drapes over looking for that far side cradle. Not there. Only about ready to peel that hand free. Tries rolling through. Turns back into Woods. And takes Real over to his back. Reverses him and getting some near falls. It's going to be a six point move. Just a nice explosion right there by Lemley. Just hipped really hard back into him and turned into him and caught him. He's got that wing in still on Real. Still haven't awarded the four near fall yet because he still has that wing in. A minute to go. Real Woods is in a dogfight with a true freshman. Yeah. That's true freshman. You can tell he's he's young and he's ambitious and he wants this match. Like you said, he he went down immediately. Like he's coming at Woods like a lot. Like he's he's not taking a back seat to no, him. He has not been taking a back seat at all whatsoever. Woods down six to one. There's Real in on a shot again. Couldn't get it. Limney in that front headlock. Real clears up out of it. Well, Real needs to take down this period. I mean, 25 seconds to go, a takedown would go a long ways, make the score 6-4. to four. And he's not going to get it. Ten seconds left, changing levels a little bit. And that's going to do the period, but... Woods trying to force something from the top. Gets reversed to his back. 
And he's going to start down. Still has 12 seconds built towards his riding time. Real gets set. Limley covers. Right away, Real up to his feet. Limley pulls him back down. Real pops the arms off, gets out for the escape. So that'll make it 6-2. to two. Still, he's got to get a couple of takedowns here or a takedown and a turn. Nice shot, shot from a long man. ways away. Limley able to throw that leg back. Boy, Real's going to be tested here big time. Underhook. It's Lemley coming out Woods big time, hard. A minute 15 to go in the third. Woods down 6-2. to two. So Lemley just keeps coming at him. There's a sweep attempt right there by Woods. Didn't get it. Trying a two-on-one arm drag, and that's going to be illegal hold. So that's going to make it 7-2. to two. We tried the arm drag, but... Well, this does not look good for real at all no. whatsoever. We need feet to back big time here. And that's, Woods is not a feet to back wrestler. And this Lemley's doing a great job of just kind of holding position and hanging out and not stalling, just kind of staying in there and fighting. There's an underhook by Lemley coming at Woods. I mean, we got to try a headlock. We got to try something here. 7 2, Woods is down. That's going to do it. And we got 20 seconds to go here. It might take Woods down another time here. He's got a cradle locked up on Woods. And he does. He takes him down and puts him to his back again. The 10 seconds. This is tight, too. Lumley trying to adjust. Three, two, one. Woods going to fight off the fall, but that's going to be the major decision the other way in favor of Michigan's Limley. 14-2. Hawks down 10 to 0. If you're looking for a place to stay near Iowa City and the University of Iowa, Hyatt Regency Coralville offers a memorable experience. The newly remodeled 288 room hotel features an on site restaurant, new cafe serving Starbucks, beautiful outdoor terrace, and much more. Hyatt Regency Coralville, located in the Iowa River Landing District and is within walking distance to unique restaurants, luxury retailers, and live events at Extreme Arena. We move to 149 pounds. Victor Voinovich for the Hawkeyes, taking on number six, Austin Gomez, a senior with a 4-0 record. Final score from Iowa City, the Hawkeye men hang on for a 79-77 win over Ohio State. Congrats to Coach McCaffrey and the Hawkeyes. Well, we knew coming in, Mark, that it's definitely been a step up from what we've seen in the last three dual meets, but Michigan has definitely been locked in heading into this match here tonight. I I tell you, I didn't know what to expect here. We knew when we were leaving Northwestern, we was like, well, I mean, we're doing great. We're winning by big margins and stuff, but we'll see. You know, we're going to find some stiffer competition against next week against Michigan, and Michigan is coming out lights out tonight here. I mean, they are on fire, and they're wanting a piece of us. And he knew that was going to happen. Anytime Iowa steps into an arena, this is what happens. You get the best of the best. We're just not quite ready to go. One of a shot from a ways away, able to get his hands to the leg. Gomez, though, with those powerful hips, trying to flatten us out. Victor trying to adjust again. Trying to suck that leg in. Gomez. Reaching back, grabbing our leg. Victor trying to find an angle here, looking to cut the corner, but go to a stalemate. 2.26 to go. Another shot by Voinovich. Gets caught in a front headlock, though. And comes up over-under situation. Got to be careful with Gomez. He's not afraid to try to launch people from pretty much any position. 
But he likes going upper body. Man alive. Another stalemate, 153 to go. Now we got blood time. It's a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular built for us. That was that was a true freshman. Yeah. Another scores. And the thing is, is momentum is a big thing. I mean, that started at 125 pounds when D'Agostino got that overtime win against, excuse me, against Drake. Gets the ball rolling for him. We haven't. We we're three matches in. We still haven't scored a takedown. Yeah. We've only scored five points between those three matches. Boinovich gets the bud cleared up. There's a duck attempt by Victor, but Gomez able to clear by him. 120 to go here in the first period. No score at 149 pounds. Victor with his third shot attempt. I don't know if Matt Sorochensky knows how to put his fist in the air. Unless you're on the edge. Another stalemate. 111 to go. Well, it doesn't surprise me this will be the third time now because I was talking to Mariah ahead of time. There's another slide by attempt. That's five shots to none. And guys that normally are pretty consistent, pretty good. And for whatever reason, the first time we've seen them this year, just... Not very consistent, not very good when it comes to stalling. Now, there hasn't been a lot that needed to be called yet, so Sorochinsky still has a chance, but this is a case where you don't have to wait for the edge of the mat wrestling to see who's being the aggressor so far. Another shot. Oh, Gomez tries doing an outside trip to an uh, over-under lateral drop right there, getting pretty cute. But Vojnovic was able to step out of that outside trip right there, prevent him from getting thrown. Gomez, a lot of fun to watch, a big big throw guy. Who do you always have the great matches with at uh, the Nationals? Uh, they wrestled twice at Nationals. They're so entertaining. Who was it? You know what I'm talking about? Was that about? Andonian from Virginia Tech? Not sure. Scoreless first period. Vojnovic's choice. He'll start... <clears throat> He's going to defer his choice. Gomez looks over. He's going to go down. And knowing that Victor is tough on top, he took a second to see what the coaches decide. Into a sit out. Victor trying to suck him back. Looking for a tilt. Now with that leg in, Gomez able to peel it out and gets the hips out and gets the escape. All right, now we got to go, Steven. This is where we got to go. We got to turn up the Jets. Misdirection attempt by Gomez, and he looked like he was stopped and then just re-penetrated from his knees and gets the three-point takedown. It's good wrestling right there by Gomez. Really good wrestling right there. Heads up wrestling. Riding our ankle as Victor up to a knee. Gomez up 4-0. Victor up out for the escape. Makes it four to one. A minute to go, second period. Hawks down ten to nothing in the team score. Started at one twenty-five. Victor underhook on the left side and clears out. Guys fighting for hand position. There's. Changed the level for Gomez. Good down block, though, by Victor. Gomez comes back across with that underhook. Looking for those double unders. And there is a stall call on Victor. He took two steps back trying to clear out from an underhook and gets called for stalling. Well, we got to find a way to get to leg, Steven. I yeah. sound like a repeated record here. And we try a short drag. Couldn't get through the arms, though. Gomez with the two-on-one now on Victor. 
Final seconds tick away. They're going to stalemate it with 7.2 on the clock. And it will be a 4-1 to one lead for Gomez as we go to the third. Victor's choice. He'll start down. Well, we got to make something happen here. Victor to his feet. Gets bumped back down, trying to clear those arms up over top. Gomez staying back. Staying back. Victor to his feet again. Gets bumped back down. Gomez trying to pull him down. Victor into a sit-out. Chopping that arm. Flattens him back out. Gomez riding us tough right now. Really tough. 40 seconds and counting of riding time for Gomez. We're back into that sit-out. Gomez doing a lot of the right things. Trying to come up to his feet. Trying to get hand, curl, hand control. Switching. Turning in. Pressuring back. Gomez just doing a great job riding. One twenty-four to go in the match. Eight more seconds, and Gomez will get his riding time advantage. He's a crafty veteran that knows that. There is the riding time with a minute 15 to go. Voinovich into that sit-out, gets pulled back. Trying to work back up to his feet, but can't get the hand control. Now Gomez goes to that far ankle, drives him down. Riding really, really tough. Like, really tough. It's what Victor normally does to other people, but... And there's a stall on, on top Gomez. on Gomez. Riding the ankle. Gets a fresh start with 44 seconds left. Voinovich set. Explodes up, but Gomez drops to that ankle. Now goes to that deep waist and gets us flattened out. And then that claw ride as we go to a sit out. 25 remains now. Trying to get that hand control, and Gomez just hustles back around behind the arms. And that's going to do it. Victor's going to get ridden out in the third period. He's going to lose by a score of 5-1. to one. Hawks are behind 13-0 to zero after four matches. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back with more from Ann Arbor right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. Ground beef is only $2.99 a pound at Hy-Vee. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the Hy-Vee Perks membership. And $2.99 a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the Hy-Vee Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store-wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for ground beef every day, sign up for Hy-Vee Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. Football is back. Stock up on your tailgate essentials with Local Craft Cellar. Local Craft Cellar in Cedar Rapids offers a large selection of craft beer, wines, and spirits, plus their giant selection of non-alcoholic beverages, untiled art, athletic brewing, and cannabis-infused social beverages from Climbing Kites. Sea Avenue Northeast in Cedar Rapids, just north of Boyson Road. Local Craft Cellar, largest selection of craft beer in the area, and so much more. Hit a deer? Call Premier. Premier Automotive in North Liberty is Eastern Iowa's most trusted name in auto body repair. Our Premier reputation is built on providing superior customer service, accurate estimates, and high quality work. Our experienced staff guarantees your vehicle is restored and back on the road in no time. Premier Automotive in North Liberty or online at PremierAutoIowa.com. Drive safely, but if you hit a deer, call Premier. 
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. This is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Back in Ann Arbor, we move to 157 pounds. Jared Franick for the Hawkeyes. Most likely going to be taking on Will Luan, number 12 ranked senior with a 7-4 record. Hawks find themselves in a hole as a team. They're going to have to dig deep here in these last six matches, finding themselves down by a score of 13-0. Stephen Grace and Mark Ironside still trying to figure out uh, what's happened to the Hawks in this early going. And Michigan has just done what they've needed to do. The things that we did the last three matches, Mark, we haven't done enough of in those first four weight classes in terms of controlling positioning, being the aggressors, getting to the legs, scoring a lot of points, and, you know, those first two matches were close, didn't go our way. And then Real Woods, almost like he was trying to hang on in a position and got put to his back on a reversal, falls behind 6 nothing, goes for broke a little bit towards the end and gets uh, taken down again. But, you know, got to be ready to go as soon as you step onto that mat. Yeah, I just don't think we're – we just haven't been ready to go. We, I mean, we're, we're four matches in. We're completed four matches, so we're basically five matches in now. And we've still yet to score a single takedown. Yeah. And just kind of coming out pretty flat and not enough urgency right out of the gate. And it started at 125. Frannick and Luan. The only other match that had been wrestled before with Frannick winning 3-2 to two at the Nationals last year. Takes a shot, gets to the leg. Luan, though, gets the hips back. Frannick comes up with that seat belt. Luan clears out of it. Luan had a four-match losing streak. Lost his last three matches at the Cliff Keen Invite to Rob of Nebraska, Scott of NC State, and Cardenas of Stanford. And then he lost 2-1 to one to Levi Haynes of Penn State. So he's wrestled four guys in the top ten and lost to all of them. Hopefully we can make it one more here. But Luan is... He's hard to wrestle himself, too. He's, he's the king of close matches. And, and as we've seen with Frannick this year, he likes to wrestle a lot of close matches and let them come down to the end as well, too. And if you allow him to do that, that's, again, you're working right into the playbook of Luan. I was talking to you earlier. We had Big Ten Championships here in this Chrysler Arena last year. And I think every single match in that tournament, Luan went to overtime. Yeah, I think you're right. He's just, he's, he's just that type of a wrestler, you know, and, we got to come out strong. We got to come out early. Get on the offense. Be aggressive. And then when you, if you do get down, you got to you got to change some things up. You got to find a way to get to the legs. And we just have not been doing that. I mean, we not only have we gotten a takedown. Besides Drake Ayala, we I mean I guess Real Woods is in the legs a couple times and just couldn't finish. But we really haven't been to the legs much. And when we get there, we need to learn to finish. Inside that, of a minute to go, first period, still no score. Lemley, that Real Woods wrestled, who's a true freshman, he he looked good. Yeah. 12-4 and four on the year. He's got four losses. And a lot of these matches make a big difference come Big Ten seeds, too. These head-to-head -head matches. Yep. This is one right here between Frannick and Luan. Hawkeyes trailing right now 0 to 13 after four matches. Drake Isla got beat 2 to 1. Shriver got beat 5 to 2. Woods got beat by a true freshman 12 to 4. Our undefeated number 1 ranked wrestler who's a 6th year senior got beat by to a true 2. Yeah, what I say? 12 to 4. It was 14 oh, to 2. 12 Yeah, 14 to 2. Scoreless first. Not shocking. Luan's choice. He'll start down. Luan 
Swan into a sit out. Hand control out for the escape. So Luan leads by a score of 1 to 0. Franick swipes at the leg, but more so just changed levels and put the arm out. Didn't really truly penetrate. Minute 20 to go in the second. Another shot there by Franick. Franick. Luan with the reattempt. We come up in an over-under situation. Again, didn't didn't set it up the greatest. Shot from a long ways away. Got a hand on the leg. Just not any really deep shots where we can come up and bring a guy up in the air and follow through. And There's a and good nice shot right there. The now we're in deep there. But, but we lost the leg. Luan did a good job. Squared his hips. Got his legs back right away. Come up into an over-under situation. Luan has head position on us big time right here. Stalemate. 45 on the clock. I don't know how that was a stalemate. I mean, good for us. Yeah. Because Luan in a really good position. I don't know how that was a stalemate. Luan changed levels, gets frantic reacting. Twenty-five on the clock, second period. Wish we had more to <laughs> talk about, but it's just it's been pushing, depressing. Leaning. Well, this whole doomy so far has been depressing yeah. and just kind of taking the wind out of our sails a little bit. And in this match here, there's just really nothing to report. I mean, and we're 0-0 we're zero, zero at the end of the first period. We got 1-0 at the end of the second period for Luan from an escape. And, you know, we kind of expected it out of this match, though. This is what we kind of expected between these two guys. Neither one of them's... Uh, an extremely offensive wrestler. Like another false start on Luan there, but not called as Frannick up to his feet. Luan around to the side. One to one. Third, Third period. Here's the escape. Just please, let's score this takedown here in regulation, Frannick. Let's not go to overtime. Let's just settle it now. The well, Hawks have wrestled. 33 and a half minutes. There's a shot and a stall call. Shot for Frannick. Stall call on Luan. 33 and a half minutes, and we don't have a takedown yet. Well, we got a stall call, so we got that going in our favor. That was wor that was warranted because Luan hasn't taken a single shot yet. Luan's taken three or four good ones. Frannick swipes at the leg. Luan kept that left hand up on the collar tie. Minute 15 to go in regulation, tied up at one. Another, Another tap, shot. sweep attempt, gets That's to the leg, looking to dump him down. Get up over the hips, but a wizzer thrown in last second there by Luan. Now he tries to spin back over top of us. Frannick still trying to turn into him. Luan turns into us, gets us flattened out. We're able to square our hips back up, though. Hang on to that leg momentarily. Now we're able to stand up with it. Stalemate, 38 seconds to go. And so many times. Oh, guys diving over, doing crazy stuff. Last second desperation, and we're not able to just plan them. There's nice another shot, double. double. Up into a bear hug here. See if we can use this. No, we let go. Obviously, we weren't comfortable there. Still have the double unders as Luan had those double overs. Now we switch off to just underhook on the right side. Another shot. If he could pull off another shot here, I mean, you that's that's for sure warranted another stall call here. And yeah. I hate winning on a stall call, but that's – that. I mean, there's a shot by Luan. That saved him right there. Yep. That's the first shot by Luan in seven minutes. 1-1 one, one as we go to sudden victory. Oh, boy. Frenick was in on a great shot in perfect position to finish a couple times. Wait to get the riding time cleared out. No 
Another attempt by Luan in the sudden victory. A little short drag attempt. Franick reaches for the leg, but Luan kept it out of the way. Another shot, shot there by Luan. by Luan. Now he comes across with an underhook. We swim out of that. 120 to go. Sudden victory. Swipe at that leg. Get caught in a front headlock. Circle up into an underhook on the left side. Luan clears us out of that. There's a nice shot right there by Frannick. Touched He's the in. left or the right leg went back to the left, but again, hasn't been able to suck those legs in. And Luan able to get his hips back, come up into an over under, and we clear out again. Forty-five to go in the sudden victory period. Frantic snap goes to a double leg. Couldn't get through the arms though. Luan changes levels. We sprawl back into a front head. Twenty-five seconds left in sudden victory. And a stale made it. With 18 seconds left. Let's see if Fran can muster up a shot here, and he does. Again, he taps the, right the one, goes back other. to the other, trying to suck it in. We want hipping hard, though. And probably going to fight this off. Franick trying to step over, looking to limp arm, but Luan just hanging on for the period to come to an end. Well, we're going to go to the mat just like at 125 here, one to one. Frannick's choice, he'll start down. Each guy rode the, I think there was maybe one second of riding time advantage one way. I don't remember who had it. So they both got out relatively quickly, but Luan is master of these. Frannick out, out for quick. the escape, four seconds. So he leads two to one. I think that's actually the first time that we've led in a match, too, Mark. Yeah, it is, for sure. Luan takes a shot from a ways away, tries a duck again. And it will be 2-1 to one frantic as we go to the second tiebreaker period. We just got to ride tough here. Ride tough, and we'll get our first win of the duel. And no, he gets don't. out in three seconds. Wow. So now Luan does have one second riding time advantage on us. And we're trying to duck underneath of him there, caught in a front headlock. This is just the way this night is going to go, Mark. That's ugly. It's ugly. Wow. One second riding time advantage. And wow. Michigan 16, Iowa 0 as we head to the intermission. This we will step ugly. out, take a timeout. We will be back with more from Ann Arbor right after this. You're listening to uh, Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. There's something different about watching college wrestling. The speed, the strength, the competition, the takedowns. And right now you could be there to see it like never before. Play the Hawkeye Gold Scratch Ticket and you could win a VIP game day experience to see an Iowa men's wrestling match. The countdown to Carver promotion from the Iowa Lottery is your chance to see every point and pin. To enter your ticket and see details, visit ialottery.com slash VIP. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, 
beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash corn grows Iowa. It's warm this February at the Coralville Public Library. That's warm for Winter Adult Reading Month. Just read or listen to three books of your choice in February. Turn in your warm reading journal at the end of the month and you'll be entered into a drawing for prizes. For details, visit the library or go to CoralvillePublicLibrary.org. Join us for a warm Winter Adult Reading Month this February at the Coralville Public Library. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Mark, I mean, Stephen, I, I mean, I said we've I all said, felt oh, left yeah, out, you, and for people who moved to this country, I that feeling this lasts more than a moment. We can change that. I knew that. Learn how at longingbeginswithus.org. Brought to better, you by the Ad Council. They have not performed very well this season yet. They just, they, they haven't. They haven't shown how good their capabilities are. But it, I also said though, coming in. They're going to be sky high and ready for the Hawks. And, man, were they ever. And we just have not been ready to go on that first whistle, on that first period. And we, we haven't scored a takedown in five matches. We've got beat all five matches. And it's it's ugly. I mean, this is ugly for us right now. This is not, Everything is going 100% Michigan's way. But, honestly, they're... They're making it they're happen. They're making it happen, exactly. I mean, they're. it's not like they're getting lucky on a call here or lucky on a call there. I mean, they're just... They're coming out and they're taking it to us, and uh, it's it's not looking good for the Hawks. And in the second half of the lineup, if you want to go by um, rankings, uh, Michigan is favored in the second half of the match. We were favored in the first half, so yeah. we never won a single match. So we're gonna we're gonna have to pull a, a rabbit hat, a rabbit out of the hat here in order to win this duel meet. Now, I don't know how or what, but it's it's been ugly so far. Now we got a match coming up here between Caliendo and Amin, and hopefully Caliendo can get a get a W for us, put us on the scoreboard. Yeah. But yeah, this has been this has been bad. <laughs> well, obviously, I mean, next week Penn State looms, and you're never looking ahead. But at the same time, I mean, the way that Penn State's been wrestling this year, I mean. You almost hope that this is a wake up call for our guys that, you know, I don't I don't know. Is it something where you're sitting in the hotel too long, you know, get in last night, you don't wrestle till seven thirty, eight thirty tonight? Is it you know, there's a lot of things you can point to, but really it's just a matter of these guys, those first five weight classes especially, are gonna have to go back, look at themselves in the mirror and say, Here's where I failed, here's where I need to do better personally you don't let this define the rest of the season. You use this to kind of learn from and build moving forward. Well, that's about all you can do. I mean, as soon as we step on that plane and we leave here, um, it's it's all about Penn State. I mean, that's what it has to be. Your focus has to be on Penn State. And I'll tell you what, it's you got to have a short memory. Like in any athletics, in any sport, you have to have a short memory. You know, and I've seen – Real Woods down there just a little bit ago after he lost. I don't know where he went into the other tunnel or something. He came out and, um, you know, straps down on a singlet, sits down on the bench, turns around. He waves to, like, some fans in the crowd and stuff. Man, I tell you what, you talk about a short memory. I'd be <laughs> – if I just got beat 14-2 to two by a true freshman, I'm a six-year senior undefeated and ranked number one, he handles losses a lot better than I would. That yeah. is for darn sure. But it's almost like he just like, eh, whatever. We'll get him next time. And that's just I, I don't I don't know. That's just not how I would operate. Yeah, you have to have some of that. Like like I said, you don't let it completely define things, but you got to let it eat a little bit. And maybe he's good at putting on a front. He must be. But I don't. I'm sitting up here just not wanting to look at my phone with messages popping in and. All kinds of other things, but 
Well, it definitely does not look good for the Hawks right now for winning this dual meet, but it likes be at least nice to kind of savor um, some of the sting from this first half of the dual meet by getting, you know, three, four victories in the second half and competing and putting some points on the scoreboard at least. We'll start out with Michael Caliendo, who has been doing well. And let's see if he can keep that going. He had a couple of good matches last week against ranked guys and scored bonus in both of those. Like we said earlier, congratulations to Coach McCaffrey and the Hawkeye men. 79-77, they got the victory over Ohio State inside Carver-Hawkeye Arena earlier. That is, reading through the email that the sports information sent out, that's their third game decided by seven points or fewer, but the first time they've won. So they were 0-2 in the previous close contest. But uh, they pick up a much-needed win to move to 13-9 and overall, 5-6 and in the Big Ten. They will be in action again on Thursday as they travel to State College to take on Penn State. Hawkeye women are in action against Maryland tomorrow night. I believe that's a home contest, and I think yeah, that is a 7, night, 7 o'clock, o'clock start. So best of luck to Coach Bluter and the Hawkeye women. If you or someone you know needs support now, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. We are at the intermission. The Hawkeyes are down right now by a score of 16-0 to to Michigan. We will take another timeout. We will be back with more from the Chrysler Arena right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. Welcome back to the Nitrogen Stabilizers Draft. Up the night technology, first pick, just like the last 46 years. That's what we love about this sport. We just don't know. We know. It keeps nitrogen in the corn's root zone for eight weeks, compared with two weeks for others. With the first pick, farmers select. Up the night technology from Corteva AgriScience. Ah, that's it. I'm going for a pretzel. The pick is in. Optonite technology from Corteva AgriScience with InServe and Instinct Next Gen Nitrogen Stabilizers. When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at uihc.org. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. iHeartRadio soundtrack flashback released late in 1977 Saturday Night Fever soundtrack dominated the charts in 1978 just imagine shaking your booty on a lighted dance floor to staying alive by the Bee Gees for more great movie soundtrack hits check out Popcorn Radio on the iHeartRadio app Welcome back to Ann Arbor, Chrysler Arena. Well, a little run DMC again. There we got go. some tricky going on, just like a Northwestern. So DJ's doing good. Let's see if Caliendo can start sparking something here for the Hawks. We could get a big win out of Caliendo, even though we're favored in this match. And then hopefully Patrick Kennedy can step up here, and he's been wrestling really well. And uh, take out Shane Griffith, who's a national champion. It's actually wrestled him three times before. I was looking through. Really? Um, Sam must have missed it. They wrestled in the finals of the Southern Scuffle last year, Griffith winning 3-2. to two. Then they had a dual meet right after that with Caliendo winning 6-3. to three. And then they wrestled in the consolation rounds at the NCAAs with Griffith winning and again by a score of 3-2. to two. So Griffith beating... Caliendo. So Griffith won twice, three to two each time. I'm talking about Patrick and Oh, Griffith. Patrick. Sorry. Oh, shit. That, shoot. That's what I'm looking at. I looked at the wrong one. Like, yeah. 
So I didn't. I know forgot that Griffith had bumped up a weight class. 174. Yeah, my bad. See, the wind has just been taken out of us completely here tonight. We're just all out of sorts. Yes, Caliendo has not wrestled a mean before. And we'll see if they send a mean out or not. Because that was the big to do beforehand. Almost like, I don't know. It's almost like that kind of uh, set the tone for the night and kind of took us out of our game. Well, and the good, just good news is we have an opportunity here to, to kind of turn this ship around a little bit. That's not a mean. Nope. They send out Bo Mantanona, a freshman with a 15-5 and five record. Long and lanky. He is a true freshman out of Bermuda Dunes, California. 16-0 is the lead for the Wolverines. As we start the second half of the duel, the Hawkeyes have yet to get a takedown in this duel meet. I think that's probably the most uncharacteristic part. There's a duck attempt by... Montanona. Montanona. Shot by Caliendo. Montanona able to circle back in as they were right on the edge. Caliendo trying to get his hands on this Montanona. Tries the duck. Down block by the Wolverine. Two on one right on the edge. Caliendo tries dragging him down. Montanona circles, shoots him out of bounds. Head back to the center. And Caliendo trying to get his hands on him. Montanona just staying away, staying low. Now Michael comes across, gets that two-on-one head on the opposite side, though. Montanona trying to clear out of it. Pop looking to go to a double, come up over the waist with it. It's the wizard thrown in. Kind of hit a good shot there. And, man, it, uh, Mont, Mont, Montanona. Tanona. They did a good job of hipping in right there, wizarding, knocking, them, knocking us off of him. We're trying to limp arm out of this and can't. Montanona really hipping in hard. How can they end up trying to get to his leg? And he does. Should be able to reach that far ankle here. Got plenty of time left with over a minute to go here in the first period. Trying to limp arm out here, right on the edge. Trying Montanoma to pull him back in, does, splits. gets around the waist, and trying to pull him down, but again, powerful hips. We were right on the edge, so we ran out of room. Slide out of bounds, no points are given. <laughs> Caliendo, I think, respecting the length right now of Montanona. Well, he's got good hips, too. Forty seconds remain. First period, no score. And there's a stall call on Montanona. Duck right there by Caliendo. Montanona got his legs back, didn't get anywhere with it. Fifteen on the clock now, first period. Trying to slide by action. Montano just clears out. Trying to double leg again. Period comes to an end. Scoreless. Sixteen scoreless periods, no takedowns for the Hawkeyes. Caliendo starts down to begin the second period. Hand control out for the escape. Leads one to zero. Snaps him right into our leg. We're able to get our hips back. 
Come up with the underhook on the left side. Now clear out, push him away. Well, got to find a way to get to the leg somehow. Aliendo there you go, double. right there. Nice snap and to the double. Sets him to his butt. Should finish here. Trying to pop that head out. There he there pops it, is. it free. Hey. Stalemate as his arm was trapped underneath there, but with a minute six to go in the second period, the Hawks get their first takedown of the night. Wow. Gives Caliendo a four to nothing lead. It only took 19 periods of wrestling. If you count the two overtime first yeah. overtime periods. 19 periods of wrestling before we got a takedown. Montanona up to his feet out for the escape, so that'll make it four to one. Forty-five seconds to go in the second period. Montanona gets to a shot. I'm trying to clear that leg out. Montanona tries to step over, but Caliendo squares back up. Thirty on the clock now in the second. Caliendo snapped to clear the tie. Fingers on the right side. Tries that boot scoot, scoot again. again yep. Monsonona knows that's coming, so stays nice. away. Reshot there by Caliendo trying to throw an underhook. I thought he was going to get that right there. 4 1 as we go to the third. Pioneer brand corn hybrids deliver proven performance bag after bag. Contact your local Pioneer sales rep to learn how you can get the most out of your acres. Montanona starts down. Tripod. Caliendo reaches across to that far leg, drives him down. Montanona still sitting on that hip. We're splitting the legs a little bit. Caliendo trying to reach up, though, through that length, find a wrist or something, and do something with that. Now Montanona up into a tripod. Caliendo trying to lever the triceps. Reaches again across to that far leg. Drives him down to the hip. Now drives him forward and flattens him out. Monsonona rebuilds the base. Tries rolling through. Tried holding him there, oh and we give Lord. up the reversal. So that'll make it 4-3, and now he's going hard looking for a tilt. We get the hand control out for the escape, though. That makes it 5-3. So one minute to go, Caliendo hanging on to a 5-3 lead. Riding time not a factor. All right, Caliendo, get your legs oh, back. Oh, my Lord. Flat-footed, but somehow able to get those hips back as Montanona hit a double leg. He's still got that underhook. Caliendo trying to swim out of it. Shot attempt. We snap into a front headlock. Try to get down to the leg. On the ankle. Get up over the hips. Driving through. Still no takedown yet. Pick him up. Drive him Two, down to the mat. Three. And finish with three more there with 25 go. seconds to Atta go. That a boy. Way to capitalize. Eight to three lead now for Caliendo. Out of bounds with 19 seconds on the clock. Blood time it looks like. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-sweet hotels. Homewood Suites and Home 2 Suites by Hilton each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. 8-3 is the lead for Caliendo. 19 seconds remains here in the third. Another six seconds, and Caliendo will get to his riding time as well. Tripod, Montanona out for the escape, makes it 8-4. One minute exactly riding time, Montanona gets in on a shot. We're able to get out of that, Montanona fighting those double overs. Drops in for a shot again. 
Get another takedown here. You get a major decision, stud. Caliendo cannot do it. He'll win by a score of 9-4. to four. Gets the Hawks on the board finally, 16-3. to three. Throughout the Iowa Corn Cyhawk Series, Iowa Corn promotes values that are uniquely Iowan. On behalf of Iowa's corn farmers, we salute all athletes for their hard work and determination, both on and off the field. Just like our athletes, our state leads the nation in corn and ethanol production. Follow Iowa Corn on Facebook to learn how corn grows Iowa. 174 pounds, Patrick Kennedy for the Hawkeyes. Most likely taking on Shane Griffith. Who I talked about at intermission, Caliendo wrestled three times last year. All right, Patrick. This is a big one here for you, kid. Griffith, number three in the country, 10-2 and two record. National champ a few years ago for Stanford. We're watching that match between Griffith and whoever he wrestled from Penn State. I don't know who it was. It wasn't Starachi. Uh, Terrell Bearclaw. Yeah, won Bearclaw. that two to one. Uh, barely, like barely, barely held on for a victory. He was so unbelievably exhausted in that yeah. match. He's gotten beat by Lorenzo Norman of Stanford and DJ Shannon of Michigan State. He also medically forfeited to MJ Gation of Iowa State. Kennedy coming across. Who's he been beat by besides Bearclaw? Um, Lorenzo Norman of Stanford and DJ Shannon of Michigan State. He beat Bearclaw 2-1. to one. Well, Shane Griffith is just a tough, hard guy to score points on, you know. He's yeah. just so long and lanky, and he's got good hips. And obviously, he's good. He's a national champion. He's one to beat Alex Marinelli. Was that in the quarters? Yes. Like three years ago, the year he won it? Yep, 2021. On Eric again by Kennedy coming across, trying to get down to that leg. Griffith doing a good job controlling our opposite hand, though. We show foot sweep action. Now Griffith tries to throw us by. We slide down, get to the ankle. Griffith still whizzering hard. Patrick on the edge, trying to elevate. The stand up, slide out of bounds, head back to the center. 118 to go. Changed levels, looking for that ankle pick. Griffith with a shot from a ways away. Kennedy sprawls back into a front headlock. And Kennedy trying to get to that leg with that underhook. Griffith, tight whizzer. Now we go inside trip. Stepping in. We hit that hip toss last weekend. Griffith clears out. Pushes us away. 30 seconds to go. First period. Kennedy tries to throw in the underhook by again. but It's been good action between the two. I mean, he's really making Griffin work, even though, you know, there hasn't been on shots and scrambles and stuff. He's staying on his head, making him react a lot. Um... That's not a bad first period for Patrick Kennedy, even though it's 0 0. Griffith's choice. He will defer, so Patrick looks over. Tom says, Your call, but get out. Goes underneath. That's what I like about Tom. He's over talking to Drake Ayala over on the bench. Thought of a situation that can help him get better. Coming out here watching his teammates. It's there Kennedy to his feet. Griffith tries pulling him back. Almost getting near falls. There should be a count. It was. Got a three. Got a four. Just pulling straight back. Long and leachy. And used Patrick's momentum as he tried getting up. Just sucked him back. Not 
not in the spot for a fall, but he's basically able to just kind of hang on there. And there, Patrick tries rolling through, and he almost got caught on his back. But Griffith keeping that leg in, gets the four near fall, gives him a four to nothing lead. Approaching a minute gone by here in the second period, which means that Griffith will have a minute and counting of riding time. Still with that leg in, Patrick trying to build that base. Patrick. Patrick's got to do He's got to get his hips under him, though. Like, like There you go. That's what I'm there, talking about there right there. There he grabs the leg. Griffith scooting those hips away. Kennedy now hustle out, hustle out, hustle out, but cannot. And Griffith uses that length to step back over him. I don't know if Patrick, if he would have just tried getting the one instead of thinking for two there, Mark, would have been out. He gets to his feet. Well, Griffith bumps him back down. This is a good learning curve. We see him at the Big Tens. We don't want to go underneath him. Stalling on Griffith for riding the ankle. 8.6 seconds left as they go back to the center. Patrick head up those hips head out, up. trying to get to his feet. Griffith hanging on. Go. Come on, come on, get out, get out, get out. Dang it. Just like the end of Ayala's sudden vic or the tiebreaker, just couldn't clear out. Patrick's doing a lot of the right things there. He's just such a short 174 pounder, and Griffith is so tall. It's tough for him to. It's just tough for him to overcome sometimes that all that length, like that right there, trying to get to the legs. You intentionally know? released him, and then goes for a shot, and Griffith just down blocked him. And Griffith coming across, gets a little misdirection, gets to our legs, trying to cut across for a double. We Patrick cannot give up on this the takedown. Head. Griffith gets us draped up over. Patrick reaching back, grabbing an ankle. Griffith clears it out. Now he's trying to come through the back door, looking to stack us up. Now trying to step over. Patrick's in some trouble right now. He's sitting on the head, but Griffith has both legs. And there is the three takedown. That's not good. That's not good. That's seven plus eight with the major. Minute 15 to go here in this match. That should be eight already. Four. Yeah, it should be eight because he goes four, zero. Yeah, there you go. Four, escape, and then yeah, three takedown. Patrick to his feet. Trying tries to standing that. switch. Works back up to his feet again. And there is the escape. So yeah, we got to get a takedown eight, one. here. We gotta get a takedown, like a snap. We gotta snap him down to the mat. Take him down to the mat. Right there. Under hook, over the head, snap, pull him right down India. Getting deep with that underhook. Go to the edge. Drive out of bounds. Twenty-nine seconds left. Another shot. Low Again. shot. Getting caught reaching. Yep. Getting caught extended. Another three. And Griffith is going to win by a score of 12 to 1. And that is going to put Michigan on top by a score of 20 to 3. We will take a timeout. We'll be back with more from Ann Arbor right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. I'm Ingrid Lizarraga. Breast surgeon at the University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center, the state's only NCI designated cancer center. Here, we look beyond just the type of cancer you have to discover the molecular details of the disease. We have teams dedicated to each cancer type with treatments and trials you won't find anywhere else in Iowa. Go to uihc.org slash cancer. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer.
are the top Bob Seger songs that you thumbed up? Number three, turn the page. Here I go, playing star again. There I go, turn the page. Number two, night moves. Working on a night moves. Trying to make some front page driving news. Working on a night moves. Number one, old time rock and roll. Hear more from Bob Seger and similar artists now. Search for Bob Seger on iHeartRadio. All your favorite music, all your favorite stations, all free. I'm back in Ann Arbor at Chrysler Arena. Stephen Grace and Mark Ironside. We get ready for 184 pounds. Aiden Riggins for the Hawkeyes taking on Jaden Bullock, a junior with a 13-7 record. Hawks down 20-3. And it is one of those nights that things have been going Michigan's way and things have been going not Iowa's way. It's just kind of all piled up. Yeah. I mean, they're just taking it to us. I mean, they're just up and down. Up and down the lineup. (laughs) These kids down here all taking their shirts off. Got the dance cam going on. Taking their shirts off and waving them in the airs. These kids over here taking all their shirts off. <laughs> Crack them up. Love it. Camera. Oh, look at them all over there with their shirts off. <laughs> the whole group of them. So let's see if Riggins can get a win. Did they say Walker there? I don't think so. I think that's Bullock. Nope. Yeah, it is Joseph Walker. So Walker bumps up from 174. Junior with a 6-4 and four record. Riggins coming off that win last weekend against Northwestern. Takes a shot, gets to the leg, but couldn't get the second hand to it. Walker's normally a 74-pounder. Yeah, he weighed in at 74 tonight. He did? Yeah. Two twenty to go here in the first period. Riggins pushes out of that collar tie. This is probably going to be another match, kind of like 157, would be my guess here, Stephen. Been sitting too long, got to stand for a little bit. Duck attempt there by Riggins, but Walker able to down block it. One thirty-five to go. Stalemate. Just pushing it against you. Why why can't that be a stall call instead of a stalemate? Yeah. Like, there was no stalemate there. It's not like they were both, like, locked in a position. Neither one of them could move. There's a tap into a double leg attempt by Walker. Riggins trying to hip Hip into him. He's doing a great job. Almost Almost gets the cradle cradle. locked in. There's a three takedown for Riggins. Nice job, Riggins. Way to hip in there. Use those hips right there. Walker to his feet. We stay behind the arms. Go out of bounds. Head back to the center. 104 to go, first period. Riggins on top, 3-0. to zero. Trying to get that forward pressure, but Walker able to get up to his feet. Riggins trying to pick him up to put him back down. Cannot. Around the waist, this time does pick him up. Roll through attempt, though, and give up our leg. 
And Walker now trying to step over the arm. Riggins still scrambling. And there is the two-point reversal. So Riggins leads 3-2 to two with 40 seconds left. Now 4-2 to two as Walker lets him out for the escape. Definitely some positions to get some work on. Michigan's been able to outscramble us in a few different spots. Final seconds tick away here in the first period. Who did Michigan? Who did? They, where did they win at besides thirty-three? What was the other match? They won two matches, thirty-three. Um, got a fall because they only scored. No, they I won two matches. I think they won three because I think Griffith won. Oh, Griffith won. That's who it was. So yeah. just those two matches, I think. Yeah, it was Griffith, and then the sudden victory, 33. It was a fall in sudden victory from neutral. So Michigan only won two matches against Penn State. Walker chooses down to begin the second period, gets up to his feet. Riggins pulls him back down to a knee at least, now into a sit-out, trying to get that wrist pulled back. Walker works back up to his feet again. Riggins trying to pick him up. Unable to. Is Bartlett still at 41? Uh, yes. They go out of bounds with 126 to go in the second. Because he had to win sudden victory. He was He's number, well, he'll be number one now. He was number two. And Mendez from Ohio State was number three. And that was a 4-1 sudden victory match. Caution on Riggins. Make sure everything's good at the head table. Who do they got at 57, Penn State? Levi Haynes. I thought it was 65. Who's at 65 then? Um, that Messenbrink. Is that who Patrick wrestled last year? No, I think Messenbrink's a freshman. Riggins got called twice. Michigan wanted a third caution. There, Riggins tries to get that arm bar as they come back down to the mat. Picks him back up. Roll through. Get out of that spot. Now he's trying to hold him with his leg. Out front. Now he's draped up over the back. Walker sits back into him. Now turns. Trying to get a cradle locked in. We're still hanging on to the leg. Be smart right here. Don't give up anything more than at worst two. Still hanging on to the leg. No reversal yet. We're still getting riding time. Walker's all the way around behind. There is the two-point reversal, his second of the match. Ties it up at four. Now Riggins has got to get an escape to get that or keep that riding time point here in this second period. Up to our feet. Elevate that leg. Riggins hopping around. Turns, tries kicking away. Walker gets back up over the hips. And it will be a 4-4 score with riding time not a factor as we go to the third period. Riggins' choice. He'll start down. All right, Riggins. You're in this stud. Let's go. Need to take down or uh, escape quick. Can't give up a lot of riding time. He's already at 59 seconds. Well, that's 59 that's, for, uh, us. for us. Yeah. Walker into a spiral ride. Now throwing a leg in. Looks like he's trying to find a splatel here, maybe. Riggins trying to get those hips under him again. Looking to reach back. Gives up that far arm. Come on, Riggins. No, 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 no. Watch the potentially dangerous. 
Yes, oh, my Lord. Underneath the arm. Now he's going to stack us up. Roll Riggins through. rolls through reversal. and gets the reversal. So that will make it 6-4 to four in favor of Riggins. Walker to his feet. Pick him up. Put him down. There's the roll. And there's the escape. So that will make it 6-5. 55 seconds to go in the third. All right, Riggins. Michigan fans on their feet want a takedown here. Really getting behind their wrestler, Walker, here. Riggins up 6-5 by a point. This would be a big win for Riggins. Riding oh. time not a factor. Duck attempt by Walker, but we down block it. There's a double leg attempt. We sprawl back on the edge, slide out of bounds, head back to the center. 23.9 on the clock. Stay in there, Riggins. Get your hands on him and fight. Stay in there. He's wanting to go Stay from a non-tie. Stay in there. Circle, 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 circle. Underhook, and we get called for stalling with 10 seconds left. Duck attempt. We go into a wizard. Reaching down for that leg, seeing if we can limp arm out. Three, two, one, and Riggins is going to win by a score of 6-5. to five. 20 to 6 is the lead now for Michigan. Check out the Iowa Style Apparel Retail Store located in the strip mall just south of Target on Edgewood Road Southwest in Cedar Rapids. Iowa Style Apparel offers the latest looks for a variety of local sports teams, including an expansive wrestling section. Check out the Iowa Style Apparel Retail Store on Edgewood Road Southwest in Cedar Rapids or shop online at iowastyleapparel.com. 197 pounds, Zach Glazier for the Hawkeyes, number 11 in the country, 18-0. Most likely taking on Bobby Strigow, a senior. But they have not announced it yet. They've got blood on the mat. Waiting to get wiped off. It is Strigow. Twenty to six, the Hawkeyes trail. So Michigan has secured the dual meet, barring any team point deductions. Still can't believe Glazers undefeated this season and is ranked eleventh. Eleventh, yeah. A couple of Minnesota boys wrestling. Strig out from Orono. Of course, Glazier from Albert Lee. Zach. Nice shot by Glazier. Look at that. Single to a double. Bam! Takedown right there. Three points for Glazier. And he didn't wait. He That's did right. the first period, the first minute, first, first 30, 30 seconds. seconds. God dang it. It's good to see, Steven. It's good to see. Going to that far arm as he's got that deep waist on the left side. Over on the edge, just into a half. And they will slide out of bounds. 28 seconds built towards riding time. 2.03 to go first period. Get restarted from the center. Strigau set. Glazier covers. Strig out to his feet. Zach works him back down. Picks him up, throws him back to the mat. Or, excuse me, Glazier keeping a toe inbounds, but they go out of bounds, head back to the center. 141 to go. 50 seconds built towards his riding time. Restart from the center. This time Glacier goes into that spiral ride. 
Reaches to the far knee, trying to drive him through. Strigow, though, able to work up to a tripod. Right as the clock ticks to one minute riding time, gives up the escape, so makes it three to one. Exactly one minute riding time for Glazier. Strigow with a fake. Glazier comes back across, left handed collar tie. Another nice shot. shot. Great Ed, shot, too. Head to the inside, elevates it. Reaches across to inside trip action to take the other leg out. And covers just, for the three. I'm telling you, man, I, I love this Galatia. He's just so fun to watch, and he just he gets after it. And you've seen it from the very beginning of the season all the way through. He's been That's the thing. Is he's been consistent with it. I mean, look what he did in the, in the Iowa State match. Came out, scored right away, kept scoring, and it's just that's who he is. That's what he's about. That's what he does. Out of bounds with 32 seconds left. Still first period. Glacier spiral at the right side this time. And that is a quick stall. I, I'm not opposed to calling guys for stalling for just right an ankle or something, but I don't know. Yeah, Terry's not very happy about that either. I mean, you've seen guys get away with that spiral ride. I mean, it's not like Glacier was sitting holding on to it. Out of bounds, head back to the center. <laughs> All the Michigan fans want stalling again on Glazier, even though their guy's the one that's going. I mean, both guys are going out of bounds because that's what you do in that position. Bottom guy's trying to get separation. The top guy's trying to stay on. Tripod, Glazier. Into that spiral. Now bumps back the other way. And it will be a 6-1 to one lead for Zach as we go to the second. Dodge Street Tire and Auto, locally owned and operated, voted best of the area for the 10th consecutive year, proudly supports Hawkeye Wrestling. Trust Dodge Street Tire for honest auto repair and the best deals on Goodyear and Toyo tires. Dodge Street Tire and Auto, celebrating over 30 good years on the corner of Dodge and Church Streets in Iowa City. Strigow starts down to begin the second. Glazier leads 6-1. to one. He's got 154 of riding time. Strig out to his feet. Glazier picks him up, puts him back to his base. Strig out right back up to his feet. This time Glazier lets him out for the escape. Six to two. Big snap there by Strig out on the edge. But Glazier. the thing is, Glazier just pops right back up. He doesn't yeah. get caught underneath. Doesn't get caught hanging out. On the edge of the mat, he's got to either snap him and try to go behind. There's a shot by Strig out from a ways away. Got two hands to the leg momentarily. We break that grip. Now he comes up underhook. We circle out of bounds, head back to the center. 127 to go, second period. Strigow squeezing tight with that left-handed collar. Glazier reaches up, snaps, clears out. Glazier swipes the leg, but couldn't get that second hand cleared up. Snaps, clears the tie, comes back across, shot to the other side. Head to the inside, strig out, draped over. We reach across to that far ankle and finish for the three. Three takedowns, three different shots, Mark. Yeah, he makes it look easy, but that's the thing is this one, I mean, three different shots, but I was going to say, like, if something's not working, you got to go to something else, and he just he's, he's gone to three different shots right away, but it's like some of these matches, we just keep trying the same setup, same setup, same setup, and then it's not working. you got to go to something different. Go to the other side, make him square. I mean, you got to 
find a way to get to the legs and to finish a takedown. You have to find a way. You have to make a way happen. I mean, the clock keeps ticking down. You, you, there's got to be a sense of urgency there. you got to go. And that's what that's what Glazier does. But he doesn't wait until it has to be a sense of urgency. He has it from the get-go. And he does in every match. He's, he's Mr. Consistent. 15 seconds left off the restart. Tripod, we pull him back down to his base. Hop one side, hop the other. Strig out to his feet. We bump him back down again. One side to the other. Nine to two will be the lead as we go to the third period. 2.44 of riding time for Glazier. His choice, he'll start in the down position. Glazier set. He tripod. Strigow trying to pick him up. Up to his feet, hand control. Strigow drives him out of bounds. And back to the center, 149 to go. And control that time and the escape. Makes it 10 to 2 now for Zach Glazier. Got 226 of riding time. Let's keep building. Let's get to a tech fall or a pin. Well, we got a major, so that's I mean that's a that's a bonus right there. More than one way. Nice Double cuts right off there. to a single. Trying to elevate right nice. on the edge and Great just finish. pulls that leg straight up to him. Kicks that foot right out from underneath Strigal. It's like basically almost like a foot sweep, but he's intentionally releasing him. That's how you shoot. That's how you finish a takedown. Great execution right there by Glazier. 13-2 to two as they go out of bounds. Head back to the center with 107 to go. Strigow up to his feet. Glazier lets him out for the escape. Stays right on him, though. Gives no separation whatsoever. Strigow a shot. We reshoot. Front headlock. Couldn't get anywhere with it. Underhook on the right side. Trying to throw it by down to the ankle, but Strigow sprawls back. Shoot him off the edge. Stall call on Strigow for backing out of bounds. 41 seconds remains. I think Glazier's going to get another one here. He's going to get another one. He's going to ride him out. He's going to get that tech that you wanted, Stephen. Mm, he's going to be a point short. So he will be a three. point short. He will be a point short. Gets to the Dang. leg, finishes for three. And well, he's he's going to go get it. No, he might get it yet. He's got 23 seconds. Guy, you got to love Glazier. Look at him coming at him. Look at that. Keep coming. Keep coming. Circle at the edge. Nine seconds left. They go out of bounds. Head back Man. to the center. I just love how Glazer wrestles. 7.2 seconds to get a takedown for the Tech fall. You can do this. Nice. And Look at that. Both ankles. Comes up over the hip. And covers he got three it. He with got one it. second left. That a boy, Glazier. That a boy. 19 to 4 is the final. That is how you wrestle right there. From the first whistle of this match to the last. Like and everything in between. It makes the score 20 to 11 in favor of the Wolverines. We'll take a timeout. Be back with more from Ann Arbor. This is Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. While farmers work hard to grow the best crop, their Iowa corn checkoff investments are hard at work, too. Opening local and global markets for corn and corn-fed products. Educating drivers on unleaded 88 as the best fuel at the pump. Finding new uses for corn and sharing the farmer's story. Iowa corn farmers are backed by researchers, educators, market experts, and more. To keep corn growing Iowa. 
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. This is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Bonjour. <laughs> the perfect gift has arrived for this single man. The new cologne from the makers of Clintorius and Bonaire. Oh, no. France's most noted fashion designer, yours truly, Mr. Béchon of Paris, has developed an exciting and stimulating <laughs> new scent for men. Honey, come on. You've been in the bathroom for half an hour. What are you doing in there? Just, just enjoying my... Uh... Mr. Bation! <laughs> Mr. Bation. Just slap a little on. Repeatedly. Whoa, whoa, oh, 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 gosh. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, I needed that. When you use Mr. Bation, she won't be able to keep her hands off of you. And neither will you. Is that Mr. Bashan? Yeah, I, I think that's the scientific answer. <laughs> Mr. Bashan, why not jerk a bottle off your department store shelf today? Mr. Bashan, it's not a sin anymore. <laughs> We move to the heavyweights in Ann Arbor at Chrysler Arena. Stephen Grace and Mark Ironside. It will be Bradley Hill for the Hawkeyes, taking on number six, Lucas Davison, a senior with a 10-3 record for the Wolverines. Iowa down 20-11. Mark, we're kind of downtrodden, a little frustrated, disappointed with this tonight. Yes, there is improvement that needs to be made. Is it necessarily go back to the drawing board and scrap the entire thing and start completely from scratch? Not necessarily. It's just some little things that you've seen flashes of over the last couple of years that really need to see the Hawkeyes overcome and get better in some of those certain situations. We got to get better for sure. I mean, we got Penn State coming in to cover Hawkeye Arena a week from tonight, and that could be worse than this if we don't come out and – First, first whistle, ready to wrestle. That could be really, really ugly. Worse than this. So, yeah, we got, we got some, we got some things that we can definitely take away from this and, and learn and improve on. But I don't think it's like a complete reset button, like you said, by any means. You know, um, it's just unfortunate that anytime you come into a environment like this in Michigan, you just you get you get it handed to you. It's just no fun. But at the same time, Michigan's a lot better of a team than what people have given her credit for. Right. And I knew this was going to be a dogfight coming in. Yeah. I mean, their loss at South Dakota State, it was on the road, and they had, I think, four or five backups wrestling. I mean, they didn't have anywhere close to their full lineup. You know, and they lost to Ohio State last weekend. They don't have a 41-pounder. It was a shot by Davison against Bradley Hill. Hill trying to do the splits, trying to keep weight on Davison. Davison trying to elevate. There he does pick Bradley up a little bit. Bradley still scooting on his butt right there. Still stuffing that head. Davison continuing to drive in. Hill still reaching back, and there he has to bail out and give up the three. That's a quick takedown right there by Davison right off the right out of the gate of this match. He wasted no time getting on Bradley Hill. Bradley Hill has been looking good, though. The big win over Nebraska and the other night over Illinois. Tech fall into a fall. But we're looking at a lot stiffer competition here tonight mm -hmm. in Davidson as a, as a team as a whole. Davidson trying to work that left wrist back. Hill butt up in the air, head down on the mat, trying to keep that Left arm from getting up onto the back. There he peels it out. Ben Keeter is on the trip. He's back watching from behind the Hawkeye bench. Approaching a minute to go as they slide out of bounds. 107 of riding time for Davison.
We got to get an escape here. We got a minute and four to go here in the first period. Right time already in favor of Davison, 107. So we got to work hard from the bottom here, Bradley Hill. Hand control. We got to get some hand control. Head up, back into him. Explode. Get that weight off you. Trying to come up in this tripod. It's just not cutting the mustard right now. Davison's losses this year. There's a stall call on Davison for riding the ankle. To his credit, Sorchinski has been consistent with that. Well, he was obviously riding the ankle hard because when Bradley got up to leave to get out, after they blew the whistle for stall, he couldn't even get his ankle out because <laughs> Davison was literally completely sitting on the ankle. Right off the whistle, chops the arm. Again, capping that ankle. They were able to pop up to our feet. Davison around the waist, hopping to the one side, bumps us back down to our base. Into that claw right on the edge of the mat. Now trying to suck us back. We go all the way through. The old tripod. Davison keeping that toe inbounds. Hill about ready to get the hand control, but they're all the way out of bounds. Restart with 4.7 to go. Davison will take a 3-0 lead, most likely into the second period. Davison got upset by Feldman of Ohio State last week. Also lost to Kirkfleet of Penn State. What was that score? Do you have any idea? Um, eight to three. Kirkley, Kirkley, Kirkley is uh, is he ranked one? Yes, he is. Two eleven of riding time for Davison. He'll choose down to begin the second period. False start on Hill. We always talk about where the heavyweights are at weight-wise. I was kind of surprised Bradley actually bigger than Davison weight. Davison weighed in at just under 234. And Bradley weighed in just under 241. Davison with the escape makes it a 4 to nothing lead. 140 to go here in the second period. I was thinking about that. You don't see a lot of, like, just really big heavyweights out there anymore. Everybody, I'd say the average heavyweight is probably about 240. 40 something, two, 240s. Yeah. I don't think they're up to 250. And then you got Kirkley. I'd like to know what he weighs. Probably 260, 270, yeah. somewhere in there. Nice shot there by Davison. Just basically pulled Bradley underneath of him to finish for another three. Makes it 7 to 0 now. I don't know what we're going to have for a wrap-up show here and what we got to do for commercials, Stephen. Not but, much because um, we got that, a plane to catch. That plane is not going to wait for us. No. And neither is the boss to get to the plane. Yeah. Maybe if we text Renzi, she might hold one of the vans momentarily. But, yes, we are going to hustle. Davison, intentional release, makes it 7-1 to one with a minute to go second period. Hill for the Hawkeyes, Davidson for Michigan. Thirty five to go now, second period. Hand fighting between the two. Davison, a couple years ago, just missed the was it the U23 team, I think, mm -hmm. when Cassiope beat him best two out of three. Hill winning a U20 title, I think, this past summer. 7-1 as we go to the third. 
Main Street Suites been serving great ice cream and food in the heart of downtown West Branch for nearly 15 years, offering great burgers, tenderloins, cheese balls, and more, along with many awesome ice cream treats. Order online, call ahead, or stop in to visit Main Street Suites, owned and operated by my wife Jessica and me, on the web at MainStreetSuitesWB.com. Escape for Hill makes it 7-2 to two as we start the third period. And with a snap. Shot by Hill Davison would clear out. Takedown would go a long ways for Hill here. Yeah. Davison just so long. There's a nice, nice sweep. sweep right there by Hill. Head to the inside. Davison did a good job squaring up, getting his leg back. But that was a great shot right there by Hill. Yeah. He got it deep on that sweep. There's a double from a ways away. Reshot by Bradley. Gets to the ankle. And as he tries to elevate, he missed. He actually slipped out of it. Nice now shot. they come up. Body oh. lock situation. He went for a headlock and wisely bailed out and gave up the three was... instead of going somewhere else. That was an ugly, ugly attempt at a headlock there. He was way <laughs> too upright. <laughs> that might have almost been in a freestyle. They would have said, that's a slip. There's no points awarded for that. 35 seconds left, 10-2, 11-2 with the riding time. Yeah, they're going to get another major here. Hill over to the edge, trying to switch back in. They go out of bounds with 17 seconds left. Hill gets reset. Now we've got blood time. Prolonging the inevitable. Well, definitely wasn't what we were expecting coming in. No. Not the outcome anyway. We knew coming in this was going to be a very tough dual meet. Uh, it was... It was... I mean, it was gonna. We were gonna have to wrestle really good, you know, to hey, win look. this duel meet. And I think that some people just kind of overlooked Michigan just because of the poor year that they've had so far, um, and especially getting beat again by Ohio State last weekend with uh, without a forty-one pounder, being the twelfth ranked team. But if you look on paper, like we were saying, these these guys are they're freaking good. Yep. If they show up all together at the same time and wrestle up to their capabilities, they're gonna be tough to beat. And that's exactly what happened tonight. And that's what they proved. Out of bounds with two seconds left. So 11 to 2 is going to be the final score in favor of Davison. And Michigan will win by a score of 24 to 11. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back with a quick post meet. You're listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. You wouldn't wear the same clothes every day. So why are you drinking only one kind of beer? Experience the largest area selection of craft beer at local craft cellar. Craft beer, non-alcoholic beverages, snacks, meats, and the hard stuff too. Bourbon, tequila, gin, and more. There really is something for everyone and every occasion at local craft cellar. Stop in today at 7085 C Avenue Northeast in Cedar Rapids, just north of Boyson Road. Hit a deer? Call Premier. Premier Automotive in North Liberty is Eastern Iowa's most trusted name in auto body repair. Our Premier reputation is built on providing superior customer service, accurate estimates, and high quality work. Our experienced staff guarantees your vehicle is restored and back on the road in no time. Premier Automotive in North Liberty or online at PremierAutoIowa.com. Drive safely, but if you hit a deer, call Premier. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. iHeart 
Radio. Soundtrack flashback. Goonies never say die. The soundtrack, however, spoke volumes. The 1985 movie and album was full of big bands and big hits like Cyndi Lauper's The Goonies Are Good Enough. Great movie soundtrack hits. Check out Popcorn Radio on the iHeartRadio app. The Hawkeyes play here on AM 800 KXIC, Iowa City's Hawkeye sports leader. Back in Ann Arbor, 24 to 11, the final score here. The Hawkeyes run into a buzzsaw of Michigan and drop their first match of the year, falling to 10 1 and 5 and 1 in the Big Ten. And like we said, Mark, uh, got to get on that plane. We got to let it eat at us a little bit on the ride home, but then uh, get back at it, get into that wrestling room uh, as early as tomorrow and start figuring out, okay, what can we adjust, what can we do different, knowing that Penn State's going to be in town next Friday night. Well, it might be a little bit of what happened to Michigan after the Ohio State meet last Friday night too. You know, let them eat it a little bit. They didn't have nobody else on Sunday and – that stung a little bit, and they had a short memory loss after that loss to Ohio State. And then they came in here tonight, and they turned around things in their home facility, and they came out ready to go. So maybe the Hawks could take a book out of the page for them, and and uh, we can do the same come Penn State next week. Because if we don't, and we're not ready to go, we don't have a short-term memory here, or we have a short-term. We get out of here without just forget about this. Then, you know, if we don't, it, it could be really bad next week. Yeah. So um, we got to get on the plane right now and get past this and then uh, get home and, and prepare for Penn State. That's all you can do. That's all you can look at it. All right. Well, let's uh, wrap it up right there. 24 to 11, the Hawks lose. We'll talk to you next Friday night, 8 o'clock start time from Carver. We'll have the pre-meet coverage starting at 745. For Mark Ironside, this is Stephen Grace. You've been listening to Hawkeye Wrestling from Learfield. <laughs> On the Hawkeye Sports Network, from Learfield, you've been listening to Hawkeye Wrestling. Presented by Pioneer. Pioneer combines cutting-edge research with one of the largest local testing programs in the industry to help farmers succeed. Pioneer, what's next happens here. Also brought to you by Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Iowa Lottery. Be a VIP with the Iowa Lottery. Visit ialottery.com for details. And by Hy-V. Score big savings with the new Hy-V Perks membership. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network. iHeartRadio. Soundtrack. Flashback. Admit it, you tried to reenact the water and chair scene. You know you did. 1983's Flashdance was a movie, but we remember the music more. Anyone else have Maniac by Michael Sembello on their jogging playlist? Guilty. She's a man. Great movie soundtrack hits. Check out Popcorn Radio on the iHeartRadio app. We now join Fox Sports Radio already in progress on 800 KXIC and available on your Amazon smart speakers just by saying, Alexa, play 800 KXIC on iHeartRadio. When you're unemployed, hey, it can seem like back. there's oh, no way know, out. But with I the right tools, the suddenly you know, it all just clicks. Develop new skills and find your path to a new career at findsomethingmoo.org. A message from the Ad Council. Coming up next, the biggest heel turn and back in the NFL. Keep it right here. This is Fox Sports Radio. He's my troubled mind. I left my body like... Everybody needs an edge. The other guy is working on his edge right now, whether you have one or not. Testosterone levels are at an all-time low historically, and individual T levels in men decline 1% every year with age. There's a new champion of natural testosterone boosters, and it's called Chalk, C-H-O-Q. 100% natural herbal extracts with game-changing effects on your energy, mood, and focus. Chalk Daily's main ingredient has been clinically studied to boost testosterone 20% in 90 days. 
Supercharge your masculinity with higher T and a massive boost of energy by taking Chalk's Male Vitality Stack every day. Take the 90-Day Chalk Challenge and reap the benefits of the reigning champion of natural men's health with Chalk's Male Vitality Stack. For a very limited time only, Chalk, C-H-O-Q, is giving our listeners a 30% discount with promo code USA. That's choq.com code USA for 30% off while supplies last. Each week, WWE Friday Night SmackDown is live on Fox. Catch the high-flying superstars as they compete for supremacy in the ring. It's Friday Night SmackDown at 8 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And now, here's a little something that you missed from the Ben Maller Show. This thing is going to drag on and on. The Lakers and the Celtics. Big night, national television. They only play a couple games a year. Were you watching? Did this interest you at all? Perhaps not, because the bigger story leading into the game was about who wasn't playing. We learned hours before that a couple of headliners just couldn't bother to play in the game. Uh, they could not be troubled to perform on the court as both LeBron James and Anthony Davis got hemorrhoids sitting the game out. Both players went to the school nurse and said they, they just weren't feeling it. So after that happened, the Celtics skyrocketed to a 15-and-a-half point favorite. Very rarely will you see a team favored by that many points in the NBA. It just doesn't happen that often. And even rarer than that, when you see that team end up losing the game outright. Hello? That's right. The Boston Celtics, a 15 and a half, was up to 16 in some of the books, some of the sports books. The Celtics lost the game outright. Austin effing Reeves had 32 points at the Garden. This is a pie to the face situation. The Celtics were supposed to be in cruise control. That's why they play the game. They clearly assumed that they could really show up and collect the victory. And then, Hill Billy Kobe had a different idea. To get the rest of what Big Ben said, podcast it by searching The Ben Maller Show. And as always, you can hear The Ben Maller Show weekdays from 2 a.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Radio. This is Two Pros and a Cup of Joe. I think it's one of the better hires of the entire cycle as far as this offseason goes. And I don't know why I get this vibe, but Josh Harris and them strike me as an ownership group that's not going to be a David Tepper and be a little bit more patient. You strengthen your your team by bringing in a quality coach and you weaken the other it seems as though they took their time they went through their process they they thought it through and they made a hire and i thought it was a, a quality hire and looking back on it i kind of feel like it was a, a cool way a new way of how to handle things in the nation's capital people tend to forget dan quinn almost won a super bowl like, we tend to forget that. Two pros. LeVar Arrington. Brady Quinn. And a cup of Joe. Jonas Knox. 6 a.m. Eastern, 3 a.m. Pacific. On Fox Sports Radio. <laughs> ben, ben, ben Maller. The big dog. I am the greatest effing clown. Ben Maller. The man with all the answers. And anyone who says otherwise is an absolute. You know the biggest games are won in the trenches, right? Even armpit trenches. That's right. Luckily, Old Spice, the greatest smell in the NFL, has you covered. Grab a four-pack of Old Spice Swagger deodorant at Costco today. When you use Old Spice daily, you get 24-7 odor protection. It's like an entire offensive line fending off unwanted odors. It's only available for a limited time, so rush to Costco now. Old Spice, official locker room product of the NFL and Super Bowl 58. There's a new deal coming to CorridorHalfOff.com. Right now, you can get $50 to X-Golf in Coralville's Iowa River Landing for just $25. Featuring the latest and greatest in golf simulator technology, as well as a full bar and food menu. The place for a great time and keeping your swing in tune this winter is X-Golf in Coralville. There are a limited number of these deals available, so log on to Corridor Half Off today to take advantage. That's X-Golf Coralville on CorridorHalfOff.com today. 
Mason's football game is about to start. How am I going to cheer him on with this sore throat? Here, try these. Mucinex Instasoothe drops? Yeah, Instasoothe sore throat medicated drops provide rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Go, Mason! Yeah! Woo! Sounds like they're starting to work. Mucinex Instasoothe sore throat medicated drops. Yeah! Uniquely formulated for rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Buy now at your favorite retailer. Use as directed. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin, and over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRI, SNRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. Your floors can go from clean to dirty fast. From juice spills, whoops, to muddy paw prints, to little sticky finger marks. Good thing your Swiffer Wet Jet works fast, too. Swiffer Wet Jet easily cleans everyday messes as quick as they happen. The next mess is right around the corner. <sighs> so grab your Swiffer Wet Jet and just spray, push, all clean. The smarter way to clean your floors, it's time to make the swap. Swiffer Power Mop. Introducing the new Swiffer Power Mop, the all-in-one tool that gives you a mop and bucket clean in half the time. The solution's built right in, so no heavy bucket, and the pad has hundreds of scrubbing strips to get deep into grout. Don't mop harder, mop smarter. Swift for power mop, swift for power mop. Chubbs or Dylan or playing himself a hyped up cheapskate version of himself in Arrested Development. Uh, I mean, I'm watching some of those clips today and I can't stop laughing. He and you got a stew. You got yeah. You can't just you can't just throw that away. You, you take this There's bone. Meat back on that bone. You just meat. You, you put a little carrots. Get a little broth. In, you got a stew going on here. Like, uh, uh, let me tell you. You know how I saved money? I did a movie once on Showtime with Ann Archer. Right. I ate craft services every day. Didn't spend a nickel of my per diem. I I ate I, I ate I ate a little bit of carrots. Had something else. Made a little bit of stew. Saved my per diem every day. I mean, just not a bad. I mean, it's good advice. I mean, how many guys would be okay? We, we want you to play a hyped up version of yourself, but you're a complete and total cheapskate. Yeah, sure, I'm in. I want to do it, and it's hilarious. I mean, he's in a, in a show filled with some of the funniest things I've ever seen on TV. I mean, Carl Weathers is one of the top three or four highlights of that run. I mean, he's he's just that funny. Just playing someone so cheap who always wants to have a stew. <laughs> uh, but you know. We, I always say, we've said this on the show for a long time, the two movies where you can learn your most life's lessons from, you know, as great movies are, you can learn most of your life's lessons from Top Gun and Rocky IV. Right? I mean, clearly these were, they give you all, all di different life lessons for anything. Anything going on, you yeah. can pretty much apply it to one of those two movies and you can learn something. Um, his scene in Rocky IV where he fights Drago, Sorry, spoiler. And Drago kills him in the ring. This is the power of movies and how good a character that he was. Is that I've seen Rocky for, I don't know, a hundred times. And the coming to America scene where Apollo's coming, they're bringing him down from the heavens to fight. And Drago has to come up. And James Brown singing, living in America. And Apollo's dancing. And, and Drago's just waiting. He knows he's going to thump this guy. Uh, you know, I, I've seen that movie a hundred times. And Rocky Four is such a great movie. And it's it's the power of this is that it still gets me to come on man stop the fight 
Stop the fight like like it could change. Rocky, stop. Throw the towel in, man. I mean, the first time Drago punches Apollo, when his whole face and body yeah. contorts, you go, oh, my God. Like, I, that's an unbelievable moment that I've I, that is unequaled in any of the Rocky movies. That first time, he's loading up for that right hand, and then he punches Apollo in the face, and Apollo's whole body just goes, like, oh, my God, dude, stop the fight. Like, yeah, like, we're like, in a like different world happen. now. Yeah, like like it could happen. Hey, Rocky, dude, throw it like like it could change. Like that's the power of that movie, the power of his character. That like I'm I'm gonna no no he's gonna die, and then he's just spasming on the ground when they're calling the ambulance and everything. And that scene is just so powerful, and it's it's one of the most uh, memorable scenes of the entire run. And every time I see it, I go, this could change, right? Like Rocky can throw the towel, and like that that that's how that's the power of that scene. And 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 Carl Weathers is Apollo Creed. I just figured out my, my next audio series uh, of rants, so I appreciate you uh, feeding that out there because, I mean, you, you tied two uh, iconic films together. And, and yeah, Rocky IV. Look, I remember going to see James Brown at uh, Grant Park in Chicago, <laughs> and you got this entire crowd that's loving every minute of it, going through his entire catalog. But the opening horns to living in America, that was it. <laughs> crowd crowd was done. So, yeah, it, it's one of those iconic scenes, and, and as you, you lay it out, right, it's it's all all fun and games. Here's the exhibition, and you're waiting on the, the turn, right? You're waiting for the, the emotion to, to really hit this other level because you're leaning in and you're smiling, and then bam! One hit. Uh, to, one of the great characters uh, that, that we've known for sure. Yeah, and you know, you want a, want a great story here. This is like this is a couple of years ago um, from uh, one of my daughter's softball teams I coached, and and uh, it was coming down to the end of a game. We talked about all the movies we talked about. We talked about Rocky Four, and I'm quoting Rocky Four all these lines. And it came down to the end of a game, and it went, and my pitcher was trying to hold on like in the last inning. We had, we, had, we were up like by nine two, and and then like they got a couple of runs in the next to last inning. The last inning they put runners on base. They had like first and second, nobody out, and the other side started. Okay, so I go out to visit her on the mound, and I go, hey, you know, okay, let's talk this for a second. We're talking like this. And uh, I said, you got enough to finish? Can you finish? And I always want to see if they could look me in the eye, what they say. And she looks me in the eye, and she goes, you leave me in no matter what. <laughs> and I start laughing. She goes, no go. matter what. <laughs> I dig that. <laughs> and I walked off the mat. I said, she's got it. We're good. And we won the game. And, we, and, we and then won the she game got like racked around, yeah. and then you, you come back, and she <laughs> said, you should have never come back. Uh, next batter hit a three-run homer, and I said, wait a minute. You told me you told me not to You told me you it. were good. <laughs> she even did like the – because he's got the mouthpiece in when he oh, says, yeah. no matter what, no matter what. <laughs> Well, Rocky if nothing else, you're running towel. a theater camp there and, uh, oh. when you were coaching. He should have thrown the towel. It was great. And then Duke is yelling, throw the damn towel! Yeah, no. Throw the damn towel! How many times in the in the 10 years we've been doing the show have we used Duke uh, <laughs> as a reference point or in a social media post? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know how Duke and, and they like they made up at the end. Like, and and when he went to go, it was obviously really weird to have Duke still in the movie. So he had that phrase where he says, "Hey, I know you got to do this all on your own." In other words, I'm not going to be in this movie anymore. So I know you got to you got to train on your own to go beat Drago. It's like, how does he? How is he still even talking to Rocky, dude? Apollo was like a son to him, dude. Throw the towel! I kept yelling at you to throw the towel. Throw the towel. He wouldn't throw the towel. So, hey, it was the fighter's creed. Mm. No matter what, no matter what, he yells, no, no. It's like, D- Pa, you're getting, come on, man. You can't do no more in there. You don't stop the fight. Oh, man. And now I want to go Paulie watch Rocky just sitting after the there. Show. Well, yeah, no, we'll watch it later. Uh, and then you got Paulie <laughs> looking around, confused, like, come on, throw the towel. And I'm really surprised no one's done that. Like, no, no cable company, no, no, no channel has put up a Rocky marathon, or at least like the first four Rockies that he's in. Uh, you know, like, how, how has nobody done that? How has nobody done that tonight? Give it a minute. It'll be up there. I have no doubt. <laughs> See, Apollo Creed versus the Italian Stallion. Sounds like a dang monster movie. I mean, I mean people, I'd watch, I'd watch all of them tonight. I'd, I'd, I'd just sit down and say, okay, good. I'm good for like the next nine and a half hours because I'm just going to watch. Well, you can't move your movies. neck anyway, so you might as well just chill. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, I'm, I'm actually getting a little bit more uh, movement in. I think I'm a little bit better every day. Throw to the I, damn towel. I realized last night why, you know, because uh, why my neck was hurting so much, still recover, trying to recover from this pinched nerve, whatever it is. Um, I realized, I'm like, why did I feel so bad? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to take the pill I was supposed to take. 
That's I forgot to take my pillow. That, I'm like, that'll do it. Oh, that's why I'm stupid. Because I let you just, you know, talking to me and stuff and, and giving me pizza and all kinds of stuff. You, you just got me I away did from my I a fantastic my job. If you missed you the did. show, you get the podcast wherever you get your audio. Oh. Uh, rate it. Give it five stars. Evangelize to family and friends, coworkers, you know, who aren't doing their job. They might as well be doing something useful like listening to our show and rating it uh, on, on, on iTunes or wherever you get your audio. Uh, but yeah, I was get entertaining and informing America and trying to hold you up because literally you couldn't <laughs> hold your head up. It's like we watched you start to melt. I mean, Ty Shirt and Frostberg were watching it too, looking at me going, I don't know, I think he's done. You don't stop towel. this show no matter what. <laughs> No matter what. See, I would have just said, hey, guys, you got to finish. I got to go. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, I'm done. But one of my big uh, strengths is the ability to recognize pain immediately. And I, I'm done. I'm done. You guys finish up. I'm good. I'll see you tomorrow. That's how it's going to go. Uh, the Jason Smith Show with Mike Carmen live from the Tyrac.com studios. We'll continue to remember car weathers throughout the show tonight. But you know what I love this week in the NFL was – Going into the playoffs, all the the athletes and pundits who loved Brock Purdy. And then he had a bad game in his first playoff game. The Niners were lucky to win. And then it was, oh, it's a heel turn on Brock Purdy. All right, Brock Purdy's not that good. Look at him. He melts down in the playoff. They're lucky. They were fortunate to escape. He didn't have a good game. They need drop Brock Purdy to be better than this. Maybe the guy's overrated. And then he has the second half that he has against the Lions and makes all the big plays and runs for a first down every single time the Niners need it. And now everybody's back on the block Brock Purdy bandwagon again. So it was it was it was they love Brock Purdy, then it was the heel turn, and now they're back again. Is yeah. he was the MVP, now he's not the MVP. Now he is the MVP. No, well, this is just fantastic. I love you get this. get to a Super Bowl and all of a sudden you're there and and Spagnolo has some great words to say about him. So uh, people convince themselves now you've got others that still like Cam Newton. Jason Cole referenced it last hour uh, that still you know he's the tenth best guy on his team and all these other stuff. It it, it comes down to this: if the, the guy wasn't drafted where he was, all of this would be rendered moot, right? Because It'd be, all right, it's not the classical way that you wanted a first-rounder to perform time and again. You know, maybe he has these lulls. But damn it, when it's, when it's on the line, this is what made him a first-round pick. It's okay to admit a bunch of these people got stuff wrong and that the 49ers in drafting him. Right, I sent you guys the clip yesterday where you got York saying, yeah, last year Kyle was saying, well, we might have a problem that our third-string guy's our best quarterback. Lo and behold, here he is. Yeah, all of a sudden now, right? All of a sudden now it's, oh, Brock Purdy's our best guy. Well, then why didn't you make him the starting quarterback right away then? Why, if, if real, you really th- see some things, I think, oh, they just look for good things to say about to a guy. Say, well, maybe. If he was, why didn't you make him the starting quarterback well, right away? Because they committed right? money to the other guy, so they felt compelled. Right? But, no, but, but he's the best, right? No, he's the, he's the best guy. Put, put him out there. Because coaches want to win think, games, right? right? Yeah. Coaches no, want exactly. to win games. They want. No, they didn't know about him. You don't know about a guy until he gets out there. He got out there. He proved you wrong. He played great. I mean, that, that's how it goes. You don't know. It's this whole thing, oh, we knew Tom Brady was going to be great. No, if Tom Brady was going to be great, great he would have unseated drew bledsoe before bledsoe got hurt but the thing is but nobody knew that brady was going to be great he was he was a guy that hey maybe we found something here as our backup quarterback and bledsoe gets hurt brady gets thrust into the job and obviously he keeps it and goes on to the the best career we've seen a quarterback ever have but but you can't sit here and tell me that oh yeah yeah no we knew well we, we knew there were signs oh there were no signs if there were signs you would have put him in there if there well, were there signs, were, there were signs that he was good enough that you wanted to keep him on your roster and not expose him to someone else taking him. Yeah, that's what uh, it is. That, that right? would have been about it, right? But to, to your point about the, the boomerang effect here, the cul-de-sac, as it were, of entering <laughs> one and, and circling back to your original point of origin, it, it, it is funny. I mean, the knee-jerk reactions to all of this. And these are the same folks that in the first and second quarter of the NFC title game probably were smashing him wherever they could on social media or to their friends or whatever, or getting their hot takes ready. And then all of a sudden he plays lights out that one drive, you know, that, you know, he goes nuts the week before and then certainly follows it up the second half and all the big um, runs and throws that he makes in the second half to take down your Lions. Like, yeah, all of a sudden it becomes the story you want to root for. Because now he's the uh, is he the underdog again? I, yeah, I, don't, I, mean, look, I don't know. We love, <laughs> like, we love, look, here's who he is, right? This is, this is the correct Is it because calm. it's the big, bad Patrick Mahomes? 
this is the this is the correct comp for Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's not he's he's not Tom Brady. He's not anybody. He's Tony Romo, someone who gets a chance as an as as, as the Mr. Irrelevant undrafted free agent, and because of circumstances and guys getting hurt, not doing the job in front of him, the team needing somebody that's a little bit more mobile, he gets a chance. And because he can make plays when he's surrounded by playmakers, he keeps the gig. Right, and that's the, it's they they have the same skill set, right? They they both throw the football down the field. They're both confident. They both make plays with their legs. They scramble when they need to. That's Brock Purdy, which means he's going to have a great career because Tony Romo had a great career. But to sit here and say, "Oh, is it?" No, that's the correct comp for Brock Purdy is Tony Romo. So when you're looking at where he's at, you want to evaluate him. Is he a savior? Is he the MVP? Is he this? He's Tony Romo, and I think that puts his career and where he's at in the proper perspective. Another guy undrafted. Uh, rookie, and then because he put a star on his helmet, suddenly you know the expectations went through the roof. Exit out by Fresca. Exit Swollen Dome, the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon live from the TireRack.com studios. Coming up next, what's the future for one superstar quarterback and one superstar wide receiver? They talked about it today, and it's kind of up in the air. That's next right here. Jason and Mike, Fox. Hiring is hard. Express Employment Professionals makes it easy. Forget about posting jobs or sifting through resumes, being ghosted, interviews with unqualified applicants. Move up to the pros with ExpressPros.com. Express is your full-service workforce solution, connecting you with top talent fast. With more than 40 years in the staffing business, Express helps thousands of companies find great team players each year. And they can help you, too. Go to ExpressPros.com to find the location near you. That's ExpressPros.com. Taking pictures with all my eyes. Now it's all about winning. We're leading you up to the big kickoff in Vegas. It's go time. From the betting angles. Papa loves to bet overs on everything. Yeah. To the halftime show hype. It's Super Bowl halftime. Yeah. Then the best Super Bowl in game and post game coverage. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> We're Fox Sports Radio. Go with your gut. Your dog's immune system is based in the gut. A diet lacking in nutrients can cause itching, scratching, and a weak immune system. However, there is a solution. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E. Dinovite. It took a grand total of two weeks. The dog stopped itching. The hair stopped falling out. Try Dinovite for free. Just pay shipping and handling. Learn more at dinovite.com slash radio. Happier, healthier with every bite. Over a million pets helped with Dinovite. Get money back with every gallon of gas you buy with a free Upside app. Just download the free Upside app, buy gas like normal, and earn serious cash back, no strings attached. From there, it's easy to transfer your cash to your bank account, PayPal, or even an e-gift card. Upside users have earned back over $200 million. Download the free Upside app and use code AUDIO for an extra $0.25 a gallon in your first tank. That's code A-U-D-I-O. That's code AUDIO for an extra $0.25 a gallon in your first tank. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. That's getethos.com. Is another 2008 financial crisis looming? This is Kevin Demerit for Lear Capital. Just listen to the news. Numbers don't lie. Personal debt is at record highs. Corporate bankruptcies are soaring. Just the interest on our debt will hit a trillion dollars this year. Then you have central banks buying record amounts of gold to protect their own assets. They see what's coming and it's a no-brainer. Maybe it's time for you to do the same. Move some of your paper assets into gold because they can't print more gold. It's easy to buy, easy to sell, and it's never been worth zero. Folks, Kevin Demerit has been spot on about the economy and gold. Call Lear Capital today at 1-800-927-2400 for your free gold investor kit and their 2024 special report, Rising Debt, Rising Gold. Tell them Kevin sent you and you'll also get free shipping on your first order. Call 1-800-927-2400. That's 1-800-927-2400. 1-800-927-2400. In today's Marketer's Report, Kate Cronin, Chief Brand Officer of Moderna, weighs in on the speed of audio production. 
in this day and age, and particularly at Moderna, where we have new information coming out on a regular basis, being able to feed that information to the audio format makes being nimble and pivoting easy, and that's what I really like about it. As the number one audio company, iHeartMedia gives marketers access to the audiences, influencers, insights, and data you need to grow. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. It may be hard to imagine it right now, but spring will arrive eventually. That means it's time to start planning for the iHeartMedia Outdoor Living Show, presented by Era Gallery, coming in March. If your business would benefit by getting in front of homeowners with intentions of home improvement, and specifically outdoor spaces like patios, decks, etc., then you should contact us about being an exhibitor. The iHeartMedia Outdoor Living Show will be at Lindell Mall on March 2nd and 3rd. Call us at 319-395-053. For more information, lawn and landscaping, patios, decks, pools, spas, outdoor equipment, trees, shrubs, flower gardens, you name it. Anything that a homeowner should learn more about is fair game. The Master Gardeners will be on hand, giving informational seminars on various gardening topics as well. That's the iHeart Media Outdoor Living Show, presented by Era Gallery on March 2nd and 3rd at Lindell Mall in the former Yonkers space. Call 319-395-0530 for more information. Your financial future in focus. It's Premier Investments of Iowa here on AM 800 KXIC Sunday between 8.30 and 9. Join the crew from Premier Investments of Iowa 8.30 to 9 Sunday on AM 800 KXIC. Imagine a world where animals and humans coexist in harmony, where wild animals thrive, habitats are protected, and marginalized communities are empowered. At International Animal Rescue, this is our vision. Our holistic, community-led projects not only rescue animals, but also protect and replenish precious habitats, creating a better future for us all. But we can't do this without you. Show your support now and help keep the wild wild. Visit internationalanimalrescue.org. Help the planet with a tip from iHeartRadio Earth. Marine litter is often the result of poorly managed trash on land. To help prevent trash from escaping from your outdoor trash bins on collection day, keep the trash bin lid closed. Don't overflow it and put it out for pickup shortly before the scheduled pickup time. Brought to you by iHeartRadio Earth and the National Environmental Education Foundation. To find more tips for smarter, sustainable living or to take action in your own community, go to iHeartRadio.com slash Earth. Mason's football game is about to start. How am I going to cheer him on with this sore throat? Here, try these. Mucinex Instasooth drops? Yeah, Instasooth sore throat medicated drops provide rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Go, Mason! Yeah! Woo! Sounds like they're starting to work. Mucinex Instasooth sore throat medicated drops. Yeah! Uniquely formulated for rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Buy now at your favorite retailer. Use as directed. Get ready for the big game with the free iHeartRadio app, the official partner of the NFL Podcast Network, featuring the biggest names in the game like Ross Tucker and his daily NFL podcast, NFL Now, and many more. Search NFL and listen now. iHeartRadio. Free never sounded so good. FS1. Call your friends and ask how they do it. To find FS1 on your television. Go to foxsports.com for details. Boom. Trust your eyes. FS1. Okay. 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 We have to talk about the Paramount Plus commercial. Yeah, we, let's we go. We have to talk about the season. Jason Smith here with Mike Carmen live at the Tyrec.com studios. I don't know that I've seen a funnier commercial in years than the pre Super Bowl commercial that is out for Paramount Plus. It involves Tua Tungo Vailoa, Patrick Stewart, Drew Barrymore. Uh, Arnold, Peppa Pig, and then Creed shows up in the middle for no reason other than the randomness of this commercial. What about Daddy Pig? Uh, no, just Peppa Pig. No. Mommy Pig? No, 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 just Peppa Pig. Just Peppa Pig. Uh, it's it's one of those commercials where I think it's supposed to show you that things you can see on Paramount Plus. Right, well, that's like, it. I mean, it's all a range of stuff. You got Picard. You got yeah. You know, all, all Drew Barrymore's show, and you know what that—that's production company. And I'm gonna uh, see. I'm gonna see the Dolphins. Arnold. I'm gonna see Tua. Well, they, no, you get to see the AFC. So, like, 
the games are streamed, CBS's uh, TV side of things. Are so two is standing plus. in for the entire NFL at that Correct. point. Correct. Okay, that's what it is. Not just, hey, the Dolphins could be in this game at some point. Yeah, um, no, it's, a, it's about the uh, – that that's part of the streaming service because you'll hear Nance refer to it a bunch. You can watch it all on Paramount+. Plus. I have never said this before, and I know t shirts going to save this forever, um, but I, I got to tell you, Creed is the best thing in that commercial. I mean, for some reason, wow. they, 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 Creed shows up, and Drew Barrymore says, and now Creed is here. And they're playing – because it's about Tua trying to throw Arnold, uh, whose sh- his head is shaped like shaped a football, like a football. which if you had Family Guy, you'd be using Stewie, obviously, but you don't. Um, having to throw Arnold, whose head is shaped like a football, over a mountain so they could get past this mountain, and Creed shows up singing, can you take me higher? Because then Patrick Stewart tries to throw Arnold's head up over the, the – it's just an insane <laughs> – Commercial, but it's just done so well, and Creed is just there playing, and they're selling it. Like it, Creed looks like they're in console. This is the greatest thing Creed's done in years. Oh, we're in some stupid ass commercial for Paramount Plus. Where, yeah, I don't care, man. We're in. We're in. We're playing. We're gonna take you higher. Okay, I, Creed is the best thing in that commercial. No, it's pretty good. I mean, Patrick Stewart tells Drew Barrymore, "Shut your face, Barrymore." Yeah, which yeah, is great. I mean, <laughs> you got Master Chief in there from Halo. You got Knuckles from Sonic. Uh-huh. Uh, and the dude from uh, Thomas Lennon in there, from uh, Reno 911. Yeah, yeah, who's just kind of there randomly, right? Yeah, Probst oh, get, is there playing yeah. air guitar. I mean, you got everything. Yeah. Does uh, Barry Moore get catfished in it? Uh, no, she's not. But she has 50 first dates, but she's also never been kissed. She so doesn't remember him. Doesn't remember. No, not at all. She's actually the next funniest part of the commercial. That must like, be a horrible like, commercial then. Nah, trust me. If dude, she's the funniest part? She's pretty fun. No, After look, Creed? Look, look, look. Creed, nah, I know, Stewart. I know. You're going to think I'm insane. Creed is the no, best you are part insane. of that commercial. Creed is the best. Harmon, is Creed the best part of that commercial? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, well, actually, go. Patrick Stewart is. No, Because he on, leans man. into it fully. He does lean into it fully, but he's not as fun as suddenly Creed is here. <laughs> well, I mean, look, all of a sudden, you know, there they are on this mountaintop in the snow and ice. And, oh, there and it is. There. Creed. There Mike, you want to tell Jason or should I? Okay. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> it was actually Nickelback, Jay. Oh, <laughs> see now that—that's the next commercial. That—that's not for Paramount Plus. It's Creed and Nickelback. Look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me. I'll tell you, the ten years we've been doing the show, I think the Creed or Nickelback is might have been my favorite game we ever played. This was amazing. Game. Was this song Creed or by Nickelback? Hey, you weren't very good at it, like, like the Knicks at basketball. So, dude, just stop. Man, you're Jets football, yourself you know? with the Knicks. Okay, Mets stick baseball. with the Jets. Stick with the Jets. Stick with the Mets. Dude, the, the Knicks are one game out of second place. Yeah, and they're the going to get their asses handed to them we're tomorrow. The best team in, we're the best team in basketball the last month. You guys are showing up tomorrow with like four guys and I think Jamal Wilkes. And we'll play. still beat that Nick ass. Okay. We'll, okay. Yeah, but you know what? If you get the victory, the, he'll be uh, texting you repeatedly with that greasy guy in the chains going, <laughs> Blocked. <"Maker." laughs> And he'll be yelling, we're back. We're back. Just like everybody with The Rock showing up on SmackDown tonight. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> and then I'm going to try Frostburg, and his phone's going to go to voicemail for the Who entire is weekend. Never uh, the heard. entire weekend. Oh, you're not getting that far. One ring. Your mailbox is full. not getting the voicemail. The mailbox is full. Your mailbox has been full since I met you. For 10 years. I've never left you a voicemail in 10 years because your you mailbox is full. Who the hell hey. leaves a voicemail? Buddy, I don't, I, I don't what, know, what's but, one of the show mantras? Why don't you fox me? Option. I don't even have the option. Uh, your vo- the voicemail box is yeah, full. Yeah, but one of the old mantras of the show, never fall to good strategy. Good job by you, Frostberg. Mm. <laughs> All right, can't leave him a message. All right, that's fine. Uh, it's so, by design, Smith. Two big openings at the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon apply through iHeartMedia on the website, iHeartMedia.org. So two players in the news today with their futures undecided. Let's deal with Tua Tagovailoa first. Uh, this commercial not aside because you know obviously. The <laughs> well, he com- couldn't get the throw. He couldn't make He's the throw. Pick, so what yeah. does that tell you? You gonna pay uh, max money for this guy? I'm I'm not gonna throw a child. What do you mean? I'm not gonna throw a child. <laughs> He's a cartoon character. You can throw him. He'll land. He'll be fine. It's, haven't you watched Roadrunner, Wiley Coyote? He falls off the biggest cliffs in the world. He's okay three seconds later, and he's got a lab coat on, and he's building some kind of crazy contraption that's going to trap the Roadrunner. I mean, you can throw a cartoon character. Um, Tua said that today he expects talk on a new contract and a contract extension in the coming months. 
Now, his year he had this year, terrific year. Dolphins had a great offensive year. Still, you have all kinds of people that want to question Tua Tagovailoa. Is he that good? Look at him in the wild card game. He can't throw the ball deep. They're figure out, they'll figure out the offense. There is no more polarizing quarterback outside of Dak Prescott than Tua Tungavailoa. And Tua saying today he expects talk, and, and both sides are getting into it, that he expects his rookie contract to be extended, which means a pretty big payday, meaning Tua is going to be the Dolphins quarterback for the next few years. He expects a long-term deal this summer. Now, I can solve this really simple because – you have the camps of two is really good, two is fantastic, look at the Dolphins' offense, and then you have, boy, if they had a better quarterback or a guy that could throw deep or a guy that could do anything, then they'd be better off. But it's really simple when you get to this point, when you say, hey, do the Dolphins extend to a tongue of Iloa or not? And it's always the point what you have to ask when you're talking about a new head coach or a new quarterback. Can you upgrade? How easy is it going to be for you to upgrade from the position you're in right now? And Tua, for his faults, and it's not like he doesn't have them, all right, when you get Tua on the run, you get him out of the pocket, he doesn't have a strong enough arm to go deep, he can't throw a deep out, and that's when you wind up getting in trouble. But all quarterbacks have their Achilles heel. Overall, Tua had a pretty big year this year, right? Uh, a career high in yards passing, uh, someone who led this offense to unbelievable heights that, that the Dolphins' offense hasn't had in years. Uh, Tua is pretty good. The odds you're going to get better, how are you going to get better? You're going to get better than a guy for, for 4,600 yards, 29 touchdowns, fifth most in the NFL. You're not going to upgrade over that. You're not. I'm sorry, unless you have the number one pick in the draft, you think we can get a generational talent at quarterback. But how are you going to get better? How are you going to say, okay, two is out, we're going to go get this guy instead? There's nobody out there you can go get. That's better than Tua. And it's not like you're stuck with a guy who's middle of the pack and is just kind of, eh, that's league average. No, you have a guy that's above league average that is pretty dangerous. Yes, he has his faults. He has his Achilles heel. He has ways you can slow him down. But i got to think as he progresses as a quarterback, every year gets better and better. Every year he gets better and better. His touchdowns go up. His completion percentage goes up. His quarterback rating goes up. His yardage goes up. Everything goes up. Four years now running for Tua with the Miami Dolphins. I got to think he can continue on a bit of an uptick for a little while longer because he's only 25 years old. Yes, you extend Tua, he's the quarterback of the Dolphins, because you're not going to get better. So it's it's pretty simple when you say yes or no, that's your answer. Yeah, I just don't see how you don't, right? You you know what you have in Tua Tungavailoa. You can win games. You've got a strong base. You've got the dual running backs. You've got the wide receiver position. The only thing you're missing out of there is uh, you probably would love to add a possession-type tight end uh, to the mix there in Miami. But And, and someone that stays healthy anyway uh, in, the, in the process. And, and your offensive line, like all offensive lines, probably needs an upgrade. But when we're looking at the type of offense McDaniel wants to run – like I, I just don't understand, you know, the the idea of moving off him. Like in Chicago, you're like, all right, Justin Fields, wins, losses, zebra flus, all of these things. You could say, well, good, not great, move it on. With Tua, you you've shown that you you can play, and that you can achieve some pretty big point totals. If and it's a lot, a lot about health, man. When when Achan was healthy and Tyreek Hill was healthy and and. You know, you always hate to run it down that road, too. But the the fact of the matter is that they were one of the most explosive offenses when things were cooking. Now, come playoff football, it's a different thing, kind of like we talk about with the NBA for years, right? All of a sudden, the, the whistles get swallowed, all of those things. Talk about conference tournaments or even the NCAA tournament uh, on the men's side, and, you know, how things get officiated. But for the Dolphins... You, you had a rhythm. You got a guy that completes 70% of his passes, two-to-one touchdown ratio, touchdown to interception ratio. Yeah, obviously you'd love the turnovers to tick back a little bit. And some of the arm strength issues that you talk about, well, that means you got to scheme it up so he's not, you know, floating the ball uh, to the sidelines uh, quite quite as often. But, yeah, I don't, I don't see how you, you don't. And trying to think that you're going to, all right, push him, let me see one more year or any of that stuff is just nonsense. No, it's it's a case of 
of, of seeing the landscape. And it's the same thing for head coaches, right? Like, we have to let a head coach go. We need a new head coach. Why? We need a new vision. We need something else. If you have questions, this is when those guys stay. All right, well, we think we, we, think we have our guy, and we think that, that even though there's, there's some things that we wish he would do better, that we like what's going on right now. But when you have to, that's when you make the move. And you don't have to go get a new quarterback. And I, I know that Tua is polarizing. I get that he doesn't have his fans, and he's never going to have his fans, right? He's like Dak Prescott. You know, you're going to have people that like you, and you have people that no matter what, just don't like you. Just don't. Nothing is good enough. You could win the Super Bowl, and people are going to get on social media and go, "Look at these throws that Tua missed here in the first half." I don't know how the Dolphins won with him. I don't think they can go forward. He's not. He's not a true championship quarterback. But we just won the Super Bowl. Doesn't matter. Look at some of these throws. Look at this throw to Tyree Kill in the third quarter. He threw up a duck, and Tyree Kill was fifty yards downfield. Like that's always going to happen. And so, no matter what. He signs a contract extension. He doesn't. He's still going to be polarizing, and people are still not going to like him. They're still not going to like what he does. But in the end, you got to are you are you going to get better? And you're not going to get better than him. And you're not going to get better for the next couple of years. There's no guys you're going to get in free agency. You're not going to say, "Oh, Kirk Cousins, come in and be the guy." Oh, right, right. You're, you're going to throw it all to the side for Kirk Cousins. I mean, there's no guys that you're going to say, "Okay, this is what it is." And and because of the position he plays, and and he's just become the AFC version of Dak. This is what's going to happen for Tua. Exit out about a fresca. Exit swollen dome. The Jason Smith Show with my best friend Mike Harmon live from the Tyrac.com studios. Time now to find out what's trending in the wide world of sports with special delivery. Steve DeSager He's got everything right now with us. Steve-O. Let's start with the NFL before we get to hey, the Steve. NBA. Hey there, the Seattle Seahawks are hiring Leslie Frazier as assistant head coach. The Raiders got Deshaun Foster as running backs coach from UCLA. The Rams hired Chargers interim coach Giff Smith as their defensive line coach. Greg Roman, ex of Baltimore, will reportedly be on Jim Harbaugh's Charger staff along with Jesse Minter. The Steelers formally announced Arthur Smith, ex of Atlanta, as their new offensive coordinator. The Titans' new offensive coordinator is Nick Holes from Jacksonville. NFL Network says the Bucks are working on hiring as offensive coordinator Liam Cohen from Kentucky. Bucks veteran center Ryan Jensen announced he's retiring, and Dolphins quarterback Tua Tonga-Vailoa does expect to sign a contract extension this offseason. The NFL's Pro Bowl games are going on this weekend. The Super Bowl is a week from Sunday in Las Vegas, Kansas City against San Francisco. Chiefs running back Isaiah Pacheco was limited in practice again today, toe and ankle injuries. All-Pro guard Joe Tooney did not practice again for KC due to his pectoral injury. He's questionable for the Super Bowl. For the 49ers, tight end George Kittle with his toe injury did not practice again today, but he downplayed that injury. The NBA's late game went to Denver at home, beating Paul Portland 120 to 108. Nikola Jokic was questionable with a bad back. He played kind of triple double, 27 points, 22 rebounds, and 12 assists in the victory. Scoot Henderson 30 points in the loss for the Blazers. Golden State won at Memphis 121 to 101. Jonathan Kaminga led with 29 points. Golden State's record now 21 and 24. Lakers have been a 500 team. LeBron James and Anthony Davis are questionable for tomorrow night at New York. They missed last night's win. They'll at still Boston. beat the next Steve. <laughs> the Lakers' Jared Vanderbilt expected to miss several weeks after last night's foot injury. Knicks 129. Lakers 46. There's your score. <laughs> I, th- I would expect that from one of the Chicago guys, like the old There's... SNLs. <laughs> Ditka 72, any opponent 2. <laughs> Is Ditka driving the bus? I thought uh... it was a mini Ditka. Oh, okay. 140 to 2. <laughs> uh, did the hurricane named Ditka 75, Ditka 7. What if the hurricane wasn't named Ditka? Oh, Ditka 47, Hurricane 40. Bulls, Bears. Bulls in the news. Guard Zach Levine will reportedly miss at least another week with an ankle injury. Kyrie Irving and the Mavs doubtful for Saturday against Milwaukee with a sprained thumb. Oklahoma City sent Charlotte to a sixth straight loss, 126 to 106. New Orleans won at San Antonio, 114 113. As Zion Williamson had 33 points, including the game winning layup with about three seconds left. Orlando outscored. Minnesota on their court, 
by 10 in the fourth quarter. Beat them 108-106. Rudy Gobert in the loss, 22 points, 16 rebounds. Wins for Houston and Sacramento. Victories for Miami and Atlanta. Hawks beat Phoenix 129-120 despite 35 points from Kevin Durant. And the Clippers have won 15 of their last 18 games. They shot 60% from the floor in a win at Detroit, 136-125. to Kawhi Leonard, 33 points, no turnovers. Triple header of college hoops on FS1. Iowa edged Ohio State 79-77. Butler has won at 13th ranked Creighton 99-98. And underway at Nevada, the Wolfpack trying to go to 17-5. Leading San Jose State already 27-11 in the first half. 21st ranked Dayton beat St. Bonaventure 76-71. And it's NHL All-Star Weekend. L.A. fired coach Todd McClellan. Skills competition winner tonight, Connor McDavid. Back to you. Boy, Steve, you're missing the big story. The Knicks didn't play? The Knicks had the day off. What's going on in the city? What are people talking about? What, what are they doing to kill time before the game tomorrow? Like that? That's the bit, That's the lead. What's going on in the city? The Yankees yeah. are going to end spring training with two exhibitions in Mexico <laughs> against a Mexican league team. That is leading all sports casts, I am sure. <laughs> well well played, Steve. Steve. Wow, he actually had something ready there. How about What's that? What's going Boom. on in New York? I got it. That's, Don't go screwing wow. around with Steve DeSager. Wow. Uh, coming up next, so there's your future for Tua Tungavailoa. What about a superstar wide receiver who says, I'm uncertain what the future holds? Well, luckily, we can give you those answers coming up next right here. Jason and Mike, this is Fox Sports Radio. Jason, Creed or Nickelback? This is uh, American Werewolf in London, 1981. Creed's Clearwater Revival. So, Creed? Yeah, I'll say Creed. Okay, good to get us. Some of the Big Lebowski soundtrack. We don't just talk about the NFL. We know our NFL. You, know, you can sit there and say you're playing lesser opponents. That's how you get beat. Listen, the NFL is, is always going to be shield-driven. This is your home for the NFL. Because on Fox Sports Radio, NFL game days are different. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-529-2856. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes or overweight or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-529-2856. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800 800- 800-529-2856. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. For affordable term life, call 800-529-2856. You know the biggest games are won in the trenches, right? Even armpit trenches. That's right. Luckily, Old Spice, the greatest smell in the NFL, has you covered. Grab a four-pack of Old Spice Swagger deodorant at Costco today. When you use Old Spice daily, you get 24-7 odor protection. It's like an entire offensive line fending off unwanted odors. It's only available for a limited time, so rush to Costco now. Old Spice, official locker room product of the NFL and Super Bowl 58. Basketball Hall of Famer Dwayne Wade explores the lives and motivations of sports, music, and entertainment icons in his podcast, The Why with Dwayne Wade. In each episode, he delves into the inspiration behind their greatness, reflects on his own career, and goes behind the curtain to get the stories you've never heard. How did you feel about me in 2006? Well, there wasn't a lot of love there, I'd say. Uh, (laughs) We've never had a conversation to this point. Listen to The Why with Dwayne Wade on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Mason's football game is about to start. How am I going to cheer him on with this sore throat? Here, try these. Mucinex InstaSooth drops? Yeah, InstaSooth sore throat medicated drops provide rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Go, Mason! Yeah! Woo! Sounds like they're starting to work. Mucinex InstaSooth sore throat medicated drops. Yeah! Uniquely formulated for rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Buy now at your favorite retailer. Use it directed.
There's a new deal coming to CorridorHalfOff.com. Right now, you can get $50 to X-Golf in Coralville's Iowa River Landing for just $25. Featuring the latest and greatest in golf simulator technology, as well as a full bar and food menu. The place for a great time and keeping your swing in tune this winter is X-Golf in Coralville. There are a limited number of these deals available, so log on to Corridor Half Off today to take advantage. That's X-Golf Coralville on CorridorHalfOff.com today. The NFL playoffs are here, and there's no better way to stay up to date on the latest from our league than with the Around the NFL podcast. Join me, Dan Hansis, and my buds, Mark Sessler and Greg Rosenthal, for news and fresh content all playoffs long. We've been doing this together for over 10 years, and the playoffs always offer up something we've never seen before. We'll preview and recap every game as we make our way through the playoffs and to Las Vegas for Super Bowl 58. Listen to the Around the NFL podcast on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Heed the call. AM 800 KXIC. But you have to admit, the NFL wants that. You're going to tell me the NFL doesn't want the underdog Chiefs win. Patrick Mahomes is like, hey, we're still here. We're still here. And then Travis Kelsey's there kissing Taylor Swift, confetti in the background, and he proposes. I think most people are sick Give of the Chiefs. Break. I think most people are sick of the nah. Chiefs. Covino and Rich, weekdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific on Fox Sports Radio. Yeah, here we go. The Ben Maller Show. Are you in Washington football team? After having an inclusive search and talking to coaches here, there, and everywhere, they climbed on the bandwagon with Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is going to be the head coach. (laughs) Dan Quinn. Uh, He exits the Cowboys after puking it up. The Cowboy defense sliced up by Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers. In that playoff game, pathetic defensive football, and Dan Quinn got a head coaching job after that. How embarrassing is that? He takes over the woebegone commander, so it's not a great job. People like Dan Quinn. And to that, I say, yippee Kaye. I haven't seen anyone say what a great coach Dan Quinn is. Ben Maller, weeknights, 2 a.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Pacific, on Fox Sports Radio. I don't think this is exaggeration. We're in your car. (laughs) Your laptop. On your phone. Give me options. Let me choose. Hey, Siri. Uh Uh-huh. Play Fox Sports Radio. Fox Sports Radio now playing. It's that easy. This is perfect. Because we're everywhere. Even on Tinder. How about that? That is weird. Boom. Done. Period. This is Fox Sports Radio. FS1. Looking for the one what you looking at the one. To find FS1 on your television, go to foxsports.com for details. FS1. Looking for the one what you looking at the one. Fox Sports Radio, the Jason Smith Show with my best friend Mike Harmon. Sir, I'd like to spank your bald head and lick it. That's disgusting. We have a crazy NFL story coming up next about a team and a birthday. But let's deal with the second superstar this hour who doesn't know what the future holds for him. Bills wide receiver Stephon Diggs, first comment since the Bills got ousted from the playoffs, was asked about his future at this weekend's Pro Bowl games. And he said, quote, I take it day by day. I can't put the carriage before the horse. You know what I'm saying? But I got a great off season in front of me to put a lot of work in, build around what we got and what we're doing. I can't tell you what the future holds, but I'm still being me. Then he was asked if he was ready to move forward with the Bills. Stephon Diggs said, I'm ready to go no matter which way it goes. And there was no elaboration on it. So you knew Stephon Diggs wasn't happy coming into the season. And now Stephon Diggs is kind of unhappy at the end of the season, right? Because not, I'm a Bill, I can't wait to be here. He's under contract for next year. No, I'm, I'm happy whichever way it goes. But luckily, I can tell you how it's going to go. All right, Diggs we saw over the course of the back half of the year lose his status as a top receiver in the NFL. The offense evolved. They had a big change at offensive coordinator. And guess what? The offense was still really good. 
James Cook had a little more responsibility. Dalton Kincaid had a little more responsibility. Uh, Khalil Shakir, Gabe Davis, when he was in the lineup, had a little bit more responsibility. It wasn't one guy coming in. It was just, here's the next guys that we need to grow because Stephon Diggs is on the wrong side of 30. And Diggs wasn't the same receiver. He doesn't get the same separation anymore. He doesn't have, doesn't, doesn't have the same, um, I would say ability to make the catch that he had before. I mean, his, his whole legacy in Buffalo is going to be that ball going through his arms at the end of the game the Bills lost. Sure. But what's his future going to be? He carries a $27 million price tag next year. No one's going to trade for Stephon Diggs coming off of the back half of this year where nobody knows if he's still elite. No one's going to do that. So what's going to happen is the Bills are going to go into next year with the same wide receivers, the same tight ends, the same running backs, because their offense is pretty good. And they're going to go and say, okay, this is our offense. What you're going to see is Stephon Diggs' numbers are going to be okay, but they're not going to be great. And at the end of the year, they can get out from under his contract, and Stephon Diggs will be available for somebody else to sign him. And people are going to look at him like they looked at DeAndre Hopkins or A.J. Green or Julio Jones going, oh, man, look at what they have left. They're finally leaving their longtime team. Look what they have left in the tank. And you saw that Hopkins and Jones and A.J. Green didn't have a lot left in the tank at all. Like, we're seeing the end of Stephon Diggs. He'll play this year with the Bills. His numbers will be okay. Other guys will have better numbers, but he'll be a free agent this time next year, and you're going to have people up, oh, oh, whoa, if we get this Stephon Diggs, and they're going to show highlights from 2017. You're not going to get that guy. That's not <laughs> Stephon Diggs anymore. Right? So he'll go to a new team. He'll sign a one- or two-year deal. He'll get a decent amount of money, and he'll show you that, oh, wait, he really is at the end of his career. That's the future for Stephon Diggs. Well, that is always my favorite when we go back in the time machine five to seven years ago man what a player he was and every once in a while those guys do put up a big performance remember deandre hopkins did it a couple times this year problem was the uh the other ones that were long long roads in between right where he scuffled the curiosity would be for folks going back and doing the all 22 review and obviously as you laid out the Bills' offense changed after they got rid of their coordinator, changed things up, and James Cook was a revelation both as a runner and receiver uh, over the course of the year, though he had his share of drops. He needs the sticky tape or the stickum or whatever you're going to send. The sticky uh, bandits. No, that's right. That's right. Uh, but you, you certainly had this issues there uh, at times with his, his hands. Uh, in, in pass patterns, but for Stephon Diggs, he d- dropped off a cliff. Now, he's still four or more receptions in all but one game uh, where it all kind of flipped going back to that narrow loss against Denver in the middle of November, and that's where the stats really drifted. Only one touchdown uh, after that run, uh, and that was in that wild Philadelphia game. Otherwise, goes scoreless, and most of the time he was under 30 receiving yards. So part of that is scheme. Part of that is, did, was he was he playing hurt? Was he just taken out? You know, did he run a, a string of cornerbacks who just worked him? Did Josh Allen, you know, intentionally, was he a decoy more often or, than not? Like, I'd just be curious to go back through the All-22 and, and have, you know, one of those guys like a Greg Cosell. All right, what am I watching here? What am I missing? Because he, he had a really huge first half, right? Five 100-yard games in the first six weeks. And then all of a sudden he's uh, invisible. Like, what the hell happens that, that you drop? You don't go off a cliff quite that fast. Well, look, as, as the offense evolved, we had, like I said, you had a change in offensive coordinator. Sure. It was a very big thing. And, you know, this is what happens when you get old. You get old right away. You don't, you don't get old, oh, very slowly look at the decline. No, you get old right away. And if the way the offense evolves is, hey, we, we can't free you up like we used to, so we got to free up our other weapons, you're seeing that beating one-on-one coverage for Stephon Diggs is a lot more difficult than it used to be. He used to win all these one-on-one battles, right? Whether it was a, well, a but short I mean, he won a bunch of them, and, and then just it. didn't catch the ball. <laughs> That's part of it too, man. Well, the, the, I mean, the sixty-five yarder. He catches that. You erase a lot of misery. Yeah. But did he? Right? Catch you it? erase a lot of those questions if you catch one damn football. But did he catch it? No, it's it's a it's a big deal. It's a big. He's he's his talent is eroding, and and if, if it was less money, I could see where the Bills could spin him off to another team, and they would oh, say, no, "Hey, we're going to get another true. year." 
but it's 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 too much money. You just can't do it. So they'll kind of they'll survive with him for one more year, and then they'll move on. The good news is that they have a lot of weapons. They don't need to go out and get any more offensive weapons. They did that this year. Kincaid, James Cook, making that big jump that he did this year. They're okay now. So the weapons are okay. It's elsewhere the Bills have to improve. So they're lucky for that, and that's that's how it's going to go. Diggs is going to slowly not become a great name, and he'll fall. And we'll mention him like we talk about AJ Green and DeAndre Hopkins and all those guys. That's how it's going to go. Exit out about a fresca. Exit swollen dome. The Jason Smith Show with my best friend Mike Harmon, live from the TireRack.com studios. Uh, don't forget our best of podcast goes up right after the show is over on iTunes. You can use the iHeartRadio app wherever you listen to podcasts. The Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon. Download, rate us, subscribe. We'll love you forever and ever and ever again. Wherever you listen to podcasts, it is there. iTunes, iHeartRadio app, The Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon. Thank you for your continued support. We love putting out the content we do for you every single night. Uh, a crazy story about a coach's birthday coming up next. We are Fox Sports. What if you could build a six-figure retirement income with almost half the money saved? You heard that right. Get a discount on your retirement, creating a six-figure income with 40% less than traditional 401ks and mutual funds. Hi, I'm Brett Kitchen, best-selling author and star in a new Hollywood documentary called The Baby Boomer Dilemma. In this film, economists and Nobel Prize winning PhDs share a strange concept I call the retirement discount. It gives you more retirement income with the same dollars saved, and your money is never at risk if the market crashes. That's right. If the market crashes 30%, you lose nothing. Even people who are on track have shifted money to this new strategy because it increases their retirement income or can allow them to stop working years sooner. So if you're over 50 and want a bigger, better retirement with less money, call to get a free copy of this brand new movie, The Baby Boomer Dilemma, at 1-800-506-2020. This is a $30 value, but when you call today, you'll get it completely free, plus two hours of bonus behind-the-scenes footage. I'll even cover shipping and handling, no credit card required. So don't delay. Call right now, 1-800-506-2020. That's 1-800-506-2020, 1-800-506-2020. Are you a business owner, CEO, or responsible for marketing? If you are, iHeart Media can help you reach your goals and find new customers. We reach more consumers in your target area than anyone else. And we can give you access to those potential customers more cost-effectively across radio, digital, podcasting, and social. We'd love to show you how iHeart Media can work for you. From your cell, dial pound 250 and say keyword, great results. That's pound 250 and say great results. You know the biggest games are won in the trenches, right? Even armpit trenches. That's right. Luckily, Old Spice, the greatest smell in the NFL, has you covered. Grab a four-pack of Old Spice Swagger deodorant at Costco today. When you use Old Spice daily, you get 24-7 odor protection. It's like an entire offensive line fending off unwanted odors. It's only available for a limited time, so rush to Costco now. Old Spice, official locker room product of the NFL and Super Bowl 58. Basketball Hall of Famer Dwayne Wade explores the lives and motivations of sports, music, and entertainment icons in his podcast, The Why with Dwayne Wade. In each episode, he delves into the inspiration behind their greatness, reflects on his own career, and goes behind the curtain to get the stories you've never heard. How did you feel about me in 2006? Well, there wasn't a lot of love there, I'd say. Uh, (laughs) We've never had a conversation to this point. Listen to The Why with Dwayne Wade on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. In this week's Marketer's Report, Raja Raja Manar, Chief Marketing and Communications Officer of MasterCard, talks about measurement. Measuring Sonic and Sonic branding, the principles of measurement are the same, but the parameters that you measure are different. We measure, and what we find is our investment is paying for itself in oodles. As the number one audio company, iHeartMedia gives marketers access to the audiences, trusted influencers, and data you need to grow. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. Imagine a world where animals and humans coexist in harmony, where wild animals thrive, habitats are protected, and marginalized communities are empowered. At International Animal Rescue, this is our vision. Our holistic, community-led projects not only rescue animals, but also protect and replenish precious habitats, creating a better future for us all. But we can't do this without you. Show your support now and help keep the wild, wild. 
Visit internationalanimalrescue.org. There's a new deal coming to CorridorHalfOff.com. Right now, you can get $50 to X-Golf in Coralville's Iowa River Landing for just $25. Featuring the latest and greatest in golf simulator technology, as well as a full bar and food menu. The place for a great time and keeping your swing in tune this winter is X-Golf in Coralville. There are a limited number of these deals available, so log on to Corridor Half Off today to take advantage. That's X Golf Coralville on CorridorHalfOff.com today. Mason's football game is about to start. How am I going to cheer him on with this sore throat? Here, try these. Mucinex InstaSoothe drops? Yeah, InstaSoothe sore throat medicated drops provide rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Go, Mason! Yeah! Woo! Sounds like they're starting to work. Mucinex InstaSoothe sore throat medicated drops. Yeah! Uniquely formulated for rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Buy now at your favorite retailer. Use as directed. AM 800 KXIC. No, he's not. Putting the sensibility back in sports. The players have a right to be who they are. Weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Right Right here on Fox Sports Radio. (laughs) To find FS1 on your television, go to foxsports.com for details. Go! Check, check, check them out. FS1. Check, check, check them out. FS1. Hawkeye Sports One. and Fox Sports. AM 800. KXIC Iowa City. Available everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Now number one for podcasting.